country should have hell been going down the drain. I love the smell of night come in the morning. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? Don't you mind about the future? And now, live, unmedicated, unrehearsed, and unapologetic, straight off the ledge, it's J.D. and Smitty! Welcome to the program. Phone lines are open, 239-277-9600 and 775-9600. Thanks to executive producer Tripod Billy, we are streaming live video at theledgeradioshow.com. You can listen live at 96krock.com and follow us on facebook.com forward slash the Ledge Radio Show. Special thanks to our in-studio producer, Sick Rick. Hey, what's up, Southwest Florida? I'd first like to thank our title sponsor, Imperial Fire Alarm and Security, for all your fire alarm security and CCTV needs or access control. Uh, call Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today at 239-288-6482. That's 239-288-6482, or look for them on the web, or visit them um, at imperialfirealarmsecurity.com. Technicians are standing by. They will hook you up. They are securing your world. All right. Thanks, Smitty. So, uh, you know, I know we got a couple of visitors that are going to stop in here in about the... Uh, the young the Republicans, first, man. Yeah, the first the first break. But uh, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about some sports. we got a big weekend this weekend. Oh, yeah, I've been watching. This is this is like the, the guys' the guys season here because you have all the college football games been coming on. You've got the big... I've watched them every night. Every night this week that they've right, been on. Right. Me too. I stay up late. And you got Notre Dame, of course, going to be playing. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing Alabama. Alabama. Go Roll SEC. Tide. Go Roll SEC. Tide. So uh, yeah. now, I, believe me, I hate Alabama. Okay, because I'm a Gator <laughs> Why? fan. Why? Because I'm a Gator fan. Why? And say, say it, because Nick, Nick Saban. <laughs> but I, you know, I always look at things like this. This is where I, I root for my teams. I go Gators first, SEC second, then any other Florida team other than Miami. Okay. <laughs> other than Miami. Other than Miami. Well, it's, it's been terrific so far. It's going to be a great weekend. They've got the um, uh, Cincinnati has to go to the Texan to the Texas Houston Texans. I saw for the first time too. They call it Sam Houston now. Yeah, Did that's right. That? No, that's right. Everybody just calls it. You leave Sam's name out of there. Well, what um, what do you think about that game? I mean, I, I didn't know that Cincinnati was doing that well, but man, they are the sleeper. Man, they they always have been. In there, and they're in the division with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. So it, you know, now, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big, you know, NFL guy. I, mean, I right. do watch all the games, but right. I don't keep up with all their stats and everything. Right. Well, they're, they're they're very hard hitting. Marvin Lewis is their head coach. Um, he's always had him in the mix. Um, he wasn't one of the seven coaches fired this year. No, he wasn't one of the seven coaches fired. It's it, crazy. It was, it was like Black Monday they called that or something. So yeah, yeah unreal. Uh, but but uh, then Baltimore plays the the Colts, which is going to be a very interesting game. Well, here now and, speaking and, of that and Ray game, Lewis retired, man, after seven. Seasons as a middle linebacker. That's what you got to give say. him props, man. You got to give that guy. You know, they're props. talking about they're trying to determine if if they could consider him the best defensive player of all time. Yeah. What do you think? Well, it's it's very very difficult. I mean, there's been some good yeah, defensive players. It's tough to to talk. You know, eras. Yeah. You know, it's tough to compare, say, a Johnny Unitas to you know a Tom Brady or, but when or you, a Peyton but when you Manning. Look at, but when you look at him and how he he gets his team prepared to play. No, you know, there's a very few. Ridiculous. There's very few players that bring that type of aura to a team. And, and you know, when you talk to other players, not just the people around, you know, that talk, watch football like you and me, you know, layman's, but you talk to the guys that are in the trenches with him, and talk to the guys in the other leagues and yeah. other teams. They all say, you know, man, you, sh you know, even in the Pro Bowl, Freeney was talking about it he, on an interview. They said even in the Pro Bowl, this guy was so freaking intense yeah. that he, they were like, God, man, just lay off. But he wouldn't. And but that's. What He's makes just you, 100 percent. That's all the time. what makes you the the greats. That's yeah. what makes the greats. They hate to lose. They hate to lose, and that's what makes them so great. You, what were you telling yesterday? We were at the office, and you were talking about uh, a little the the pre oh yeah pre uh, season ritual he yeah, does with all those guys. What they did was uh, there was a guy who played with with, with uh, him, and he became a writer for Bleacher. I get Bleacher. Bleacher is a little place where you can get your updates on your sports. Because okay. I'm a big sports fanatic. If anybody wants to check that, it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, app. They send you the updates. And uh, the guy was a writer, so he said he, he hesitated writing this, but he did, and he put it in in the uh, in in the thing. He said, 
what happens at the beginning of the games and from what is I it the beginning of the season? I believe the season, but I think he does in a lot of the big games. He like sits there and he get, lines these guys up and he takes oil and he like paints it on their head like a cross and then he whispers in their ear a special message and he says, "Man, he does this to every guy. It's real quiet and solemn, almost like almost like a ritual." And he goes, "Man, by the time they get around to finishing this up, these guys are jacked up, ready to play ball." Hmm. And um. You know, it's and he, he also talked about an incident when Terrell, Terrell Suggs first came to to Baltimore. I remember this when Terrell and, Suggs had a real big head, right? right? And he said Terrell Suggs and him almost went battle head to head. Mm. And he said that at one point in time, Ray actually took Terrell Suggs, walked off the field, and they walked up to a behind a big tree where nobody could hear him, and you could see him kind of preaching to him and talking pointing to him, him. And pointing at him and, and telling him stuff, and nobody knew what was said. Yeah. Nobody ever did know, but he said he came back off that hill. And he was a new man. Changed man. Terrell Suggs was like, wow. And I heard later on that Terrell was asked about that, and he, he said that if it wasn't for Ray, yeah. he wouldn't have been set straight. That Ray set him straight. He did. He so did. despite all the hoopla around Ray when he was a younger guy and some of the... From the, Florida. The, Florida boy. Yeah. Uh, what would you say? Lakeland? Ca- well, or Kathleen, Kathleen High. Kathleen. Went and, uh, yeah. I mean, just, despite all the, the early troubles that, that you know when he was... You know, the first incident that oh, occurred sure. that, that kind of made me turn off towards him. You know he's really come around as a player, and uh, I'm I'm going to be sad to see him go because uh, just because of you and watching your team, yeah, it's it's helped open my eyes to to players like him. So well, I appreciate that. If, if, after we play the Colts, the Ravens got to play the Colts this this, this week, and that's going to be a highly contentious game. Well, we got Andrew Luck over there. Uh, yeah, we'll see if his luck holds out. So um, but, too bad, too bad. The Ravens don't have luck, and they got Flacco who's <laughs> yeah, up and down. Yeah, he's hot and cold, hot and cold. But um, when Peyton came, um, when he played for the Colts, he came. There's a lot of animosity between those two teams for obvious reasons because of the teams moving, and they took our team in the middle of a snowy night. And um, I actually grew up uh, probably about two blocks from when that happened. I walked up and watched that happen that night. Really? Yeah, it was on. Uh, oddly enough, that road now is 795. It's the old Colt complex. It used to be called Bonita Springs Road. Really? Yeah, that's a true, true wow. story. And uh, I, used to, I watched him pull out in the middle of the night in the snow, and I said, I can't believe this is happening. And I just I That owner out, took I, him in the middle of the night. Middle of the night, snowy blizzard, blizzard conditions. The Mayflower trucks pulled up. They load up everything, and they pulled out in the middle of the night. Cameras were out there. Police were out there. And they, they were gone that fast. I bet the fans were just in oh. uproar. And people, I don't think people understand that when you have an NFL team, man, for in your town for 40, 50 years, yeah. which is what they were. They weren't some newbie. They that really created the NFL. These teams are ingrained in the fiber of the town. I mean, you got te- teams that are have been there forever. And what would happen if they ever moved? I mean, it's a big psychological. Well, look at it. Look at it on a smaller scale when uh, LeBron James made his move. Right. I mean, he's just one guy. One guy. And it, imagine and, and the if, town was imagine, rioting. Imagine if the Bears moved out of Chicago. I wouldn't. Die. Right. I, I wouldn't blame them. Well, I'm, I mean, but that's and Lovey got got hammered too. He got hammered. But then you know, but that's a lot to a lot to go about that. And and you know, of course, it's that's how it is. But, I got you. But the, the Vikings are going to the Packers. Vikings Sick Rick Packers. over here. He he's a big Vikings fan. It says go Vikes. It says go Vikes. All right. And then, of course, the skin's got to take on Seattle. But th- th- these uh, wild the wild card. Well, you know, that will be an interesting game. Yeah. Redskins and, and Seattle because you got two rookie quarterbacks. The Redskins are actually underdogs at their home team because Seattle's coming down. I can't figure that out hmm. for, for, for whatever. But these wild card games are the most exciting because a lot of these teams are playing with house money. You know, they they just made it in. They squeaked in at a yeah. wild card. They One got, loss, you're out. they got nothing to lose, man. They're yeah. going to go all out. So it's going to be very interesting. So uh, well, that'll be cool, man. I mean, it'll be a good. Is it everything? Are all these guys playing this weekend? Yeah, Saturday and I, Sunday, yeah, or what? That, yep, Saturday. They like got two, two games. Saturday, two, two games. One, Sunday. One and one and four is going to be the slots. And uh, okay, you know, if, you, if you're sitting around, four and, you, seven, four yeah. and seven today. Rick, the Rick, Rick told me tomorrow. one and four tomorrow, four and seven today. So it'll be we a got good our time. in-house ESPN guy. He is man. He's a man. <laughs> Rick's a good guy, man. So. Um, yeah, if you're not doing anything, or you just tell the wife you're not feeling well and go lay on the sofa and watch the football. Well, see, luckily <laughs> for me, I'm actually not feeling well. I actually do have, right, I think, right. that flu going Good. on. So right. Right. that right. is going to be my excuse. Sure, right. You know, even though I've, I've got a party I'm supposed to go to tonight, man, I, I've got to rest, sleep up, to see if I can go to the party. Wow. See how that goes? Yeah, tough day. Hope she's not listening. Tough day ahead of you, man. <laughs> I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> hey, you know, we were given something earlier, and I want to just, I want to mention oh, we're this. Gonna be giving up some, we're going to be giving away some uh, tickets to the um, Everglades. It's going to be a Wednesday night game, uh, and so well, let's, do, let's do that right before the break. Before I want to bring break. something up. You know, we had uh, Paul King in the uh, studio uh, at the 8 o'clock hour doing his show, Redneck Radio, and he was promoting an event uh, for January 12th at the Redneck Yacht Club. It's the South Florida Mud Run. Uh, it says, get dirty for a cause. It's a three-mile mud run with obstacles. 
Now, I, I personally, I, I can't understand this, but you know, even though I'm a redneck too, I don't. This is not for me. But I've seen thousands of people go to these events, right? And they love this stuff, man. They they get all they get dressed up in different funky outfits. They do these runs. Uh, they got kids mud runs uh, that are half a mile and one mile with obstacles. What's nice about it? A hundred percent of the proceeds go to help build the new Children's Hospital Tower. Sweet. So it's a good deal. Absolutely. You can go to uh, SouthFloridaMudRun.com dot com to uh, sign up. I heard on the on the show earlier that you can sign up now. And I think if you type in the keyword "redneck," you get a twenty dollar off your your admission price. Uh, or you can sign up the day of the event at the event uh, at the Redneck Yacht Club on Vermont Road in Punta Gorda. So that, that's always nice to support the children. Absolutely. Always good calls. Uh, the tickets we're going to be giving away at the, at the break here at the Everblades are going to be playing the Toledo Walleye. And, um, you know, yeah. I've never really cared who they play because right. I just enjoy watching it. You know, we went up there that, uh, for, right before Christmas. Major skill level. It, it, I mean, well, you know, it's great. I mean, they, they, they always have some good fights. That's why I go for yeah, it. Course, you know, and sometimes course. they even throw some hockey in there. Sure. I sure, mean, but sure. you know, it's funny. It's right when we were leaving. As we're, as I'm on the elevator, I noticed all the guys with us that they're, they're running out to watch over the rink. There was a huge fight that broke out. I think it was on the 21st. Uh huh. Huge fight that broke out. I'm in the elevator, stuck in the elevator. Can't didn't see any of it. Well, you know, just it, my luck. It, it, hockey is hockey, and if you ever go, have you ever gone to see a pro team? And I don't mean these guys aren't pros, but you know, I'm, well, they uh, pull from these teams. Yeah, they do. These are just like the AAA teams. But it, the difference, just to watch it, sit there at the ice rink and watch them, the skill level that they have, the control, the puck, the spin around. I, I mean, it's it's amazing how they how they do. They well, do see, I have to job. generally watch it on television so I can see the highlight on the puck because I can't follow that thing. And, and you need the blue the blue tracer. I do need a tracer. That's a good idea they have highlighted it. in yellow <laughs> with a blue tracer i could then follow the game they used to have it and i think they finally they took it off because really? it was a distraction yeah they, you remember it was one year they had that and they implemented that because people like you couldn't see the puck i can't and see then it. they they took it back because they said well it's just too much of a distraction people that really like hockey said what, 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 what are you shooting a freaking blue i just watch for the little crowd of guys i'm i'm assuming at some point something's going to happen when they're all around right. well know. when you see them drop their gloves right that's what i pull watch their 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 Jersey off. <laughs> that's it, man. They're throwing. They know they're out of the game, so they're going all in. I would not pull my jersey. Oh, off. Oh yeah, that's when. That's when you know it's on. Then so. I got you. And that that uh, that's going to be a Wednesday, a seven thirty game. Um, we're going to be. What's the date on that thing? Do you know, it's one nine thirteen. So that is coming up. That is this. Is it this coming Wednesday? Yeah, I believe it is this Wednesday. All right. And so we're going to be giving away some tickets in just a couple mem- moments. And it's good if you got the kids and you want to get out there and and, and do something really, um, you know, nice with the, with the kids instead of beating the crap out of them. Then uh, that might be good to take them out. You know what I mean? I, I agree. That's <laughs> always a good alternative: hockey or beat the crap that's out a, of the kids. Well, that's what you got to do. You either you either beat the kids down and 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 and, and <laughs> discipline them, or you give them love. Right? You know, that's what, just, that's what our buddies told us. Oh, yeah, it's a he said his mom said you're, you're, if you're not beating on them, you're loving on that's them. That's it, man. Right. That's it. And there's no and there's no really book to tell you how to raise your kid. Oh, there, there is. There's multiple yeah, books. Multiple, I've but, read them but, all. But not they're, really they're one that different. you can say this is the this is the golden standard. One of them tells you beat them. The other one says don't beat them. Right. I mean, you got to find a happy medium. Yeah. Yeah. Or look back in time and see how your parents did it. And yeah. and if it worked out for you, maybe do that. If it didn't work out, yeah. you do the opposite. But it's always good to take them out and and have some you know time and time. Sure. And I use. Time I suggest time. going somewhere to eat first, unless you want to spend seventy five dollars for a hot dog. That's true. <laughs> and then after after you eat at McDonald's and have something to eat and head over there, make it a nice long ride because then you can talk to your kid and he can't get out of the car and run away. You see, you put him in the car. Have you? And wait, then, wait, then you talk it's to been you. way too long since you've had a kid in a car. I'm telling you, you have a kid if in a car. If you don't have if your you kid, if you try to a... discipline your teenager, he will say, "Yeah, right, mom, right there." No, run out of the room. But if they got you, you got him in a car. All right, maybe they, a teenager. Yeah, they can't. They can't jump out if and it, run. But if it's a smaller kid, you better bring that. their DS with them so they got something to do. Otherwise, they're going to irritate the crap out of you. Turn the DS and talk to them, man. Talk to them. All right, I hear you. So listen, what do we got? Let's let's get ready to go to break. We got uh, four tickets. Four tickets. We're going to so give a family away. of four to Everblades. Right. What's the, what's the winning phrase, man? We got to pick up the winning phrase. You always have a winning phrase. I know because I'm going to just give it away. You know what? Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Let's just do six caller. All right. Six, six caller that calls up and says, uh, "I want the tickets for the Ledge Radio Show from the Everglades and, and Everblades. Uh, Everblades. Then then just call Wait, up. Well, which which part of that are you going to have them say? Because you just said like two different sentences. I want the tickets. Walleye. Say, say, I want the tickets to go see the walleye. Now you're changing the rules. That's the rule. The walleye. Six caller, 277-9600. Walleye. 775-9600. See. During break, call up and get these free tickets, yep. four of them right now. Because call up and say, I want to see the walleye. See ya. See ya. 
From the makers of the Biker Map, it's the all-new The Boater Map. Hey, this is Chris with The Biker Map. If you thought The Biker Map was big, get ready for the all-new The Boater Map. Listing and directing you to the best restaurants and bars on the water, service shops, and more. The Boater Map helps you with all your nautical needs. In over 400 locations in southwest Florida, all the way from Inglewood down to Marco Island. Be sure to check us out on theboatermap.com. For more on The Boater Map, visit 96krock.com. But don't forget, there's a map for that. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. I don't think I've ever been so excited about a sale and I have a lot of stores, Caroline. This year is going to be unbelievable. The hugest event in the history of Fusillo Kia of Cape Coral. It's huge 2013. It's our two-year anniversary. And that means it's time to celebrate. And, you know, anniversaries are a time for gifts. And we're going to be giving away gifts all month long. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe like every single day. How about that, Billy? Caroline, no purchase necessary. You got it. Come in and register to win $1,000 every day. And, Caroline, I saw you what you did that last day. You're giving 10000 away, 10 lucky people, 1000 a piece of land. You know what? In between, I might get a little bit creative, too, Caroline. Okay, so we're no, we know that we're giving away $1,000 every day, no purchase necessary. $10,000 to 1,000 to 10 different people on the 31st, you know and maybe is, something Caroline, extra. That's huge, Caroline, huge. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. And I'd like to tell you some things about my firm. I began this firm in 1988, and there were only five of us. Today, we have close to 120 attorneys and almost 800 capable staff members. Our mission in the beginning is the same as it is today, and that is to provide full-service legal help to those who need it in their most desperate hour. And those services are many. Social Security disability, workers' compensation, personal injury and auto accidents, medical malpractice, wage and hour disputes, and nursing home abuse. What we hope to do for all of our clients is to attempt to level the playing field with powers that hope to deny them justice and with corporate bullies and insurance companies who put profit over people. If you have questions about your case, visit ForThePeople.com and have an online chat or call Morgan & Morgan at 1-800-MORGAN-LAW. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. Offices, Fort Myers and Naples. Well, here we go. Yeah, that's what my friends say, too. Well, here we go. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. Talk at Rocks. Welcome back. The phone numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. Send us an email, J.D. or Smitty at theledgeradioshow.com. Check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. If you'd like to advertise during this show every Saturday, from 10 a.m. to noon, visit our website, contact us for details. Just want to welcome, uh, we got a couple guests in the studio this morning. i got Ricky Nelson, the uh, president of the Southwest Florida Young Republicans Club. Ricky, Good morning. Thanks, Thank buddy. Thanks for having me. And Chris Berardi. Chris, thanks for coming in, man. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate it. Give an official clap. You guys take some penicillin for that, will you? <laughs> We've got a, a winner uh, of the Everblades tickets. I've got, um, let's see, line three, sick Rick. we got Steve. Steve on line three. Steve, you're on the Ledge Radio Show. Hey, how you doing? Hey, pretty good, man. So you won the tickets, huh? I did. All right, sweet. Well, ho hopefully you'll get a uh, you know, get a good good couple fights at night. Oh yeah. If not, I'll go down and help them out. There you go. I would <laughs> like to see you on the floor. Uh, yeah. That would be great. That would be great. I haven't, I haven't ice skated in a long time, so I guess it'd be. Uh... Well, I can't say that on the radio. <laughs> no. All right, buddy. Well, thanks for listening, man. And uh, just uh, hang on the line for Tripod. He'll get all your information and get you the tickets. Okay, thanks, guys. All right, all right take care. All right, so that's cool. we got a winner there. Um, 
you know, guys, I brought you on. We've got an, uh, an event coming up that Ricky wanted to talk about for the Southwest Florida Young Republicans. Um, coming up, we got a, it's a big event. This is the the elections. Oh, this is our elections. Yeah, it's your it's your elections event. So go ahead and tell the folks all about the uh, the event coming up. What's well, it? it's going to be this Tuesday at six thirty at the Romas in uh, the t- uh, Bell Tower Shops okay. in Fort Myers. Uh, we're just going to go over strategies about what we're going to do in twenty thirteen. Well, that ought to be a hoot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you guys are too funny. <laughs> Strategies. <laughs> I, I see Smitty now. Here's here, Smitty. He's, 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 I, I said, just wear a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is pretty sad, though. Yeah. I mean, what, do you, what do you guys do? Sit around and go, what the hell we do now? Even Tag, even Tag said his dad said he didn't want to win the election. Did you see well, there's that? City, there's city council me, our, uh, elections going on. Yeah, there year. are local elections there's too. A lot of stuff going on this year. Anyway, we have actually got some great ideas what we can do. I think Tell we're going to be more busy, more busy this year, I think, than we will be uh, the last year. Uh, we've got. I'm thinking we're going to put together maybe a uh, um, Lee County summit where we can bring all the mayors together, talk about how we can improve the economy here in this county. Uh, we can also bring all the groups together, maybe do some kind of Republican fair idea. Um, there's so many things that we have on the table that we can really Once you get rid of all the illegal out. aliens taking all the jobs, that's a good idea. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's something they can do at a, at a local level. I mean, you're going to need some help at the state level. For I don't know like the way that. the sheriff's department is slinging around nowadays. They can do a lot of things. <laughs> what are you alluding to? <laughs> that the homicide they just had on 41 yesterday. Well, that wasn't their problem. I mean, no, I mean they, 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 they took care of it. And just a message to anybody if you're Republican no, or Democrat. I mean, the sheriff, the sheriff guys on, took care of that. Yeah, if you pull a gun on the sheriff, you're going to die. I don't know if you're <laughs> well aware of that, but he's not going to shake your hand. It's over. If no. you pull a gun and shoot at the cops, you're gonna die. No, you know I heard. You I heard. Think of that. Mike Scott was on, uh, on one of these shows on 99 X yesterday, mm. and uh, you know he he gave an interview about it. And I mean, so you know the bottom line is like Smitty says, you know, <laughs> don't pull a gun no. on the cops no. unless you plan on dying by cop suicide. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Anyway, Ricky, well, sorry. Just, uh, if you don't mind, if I can plug, uh, we need all the help that we can get this year. If you guys want to go to uh, Facebook and just. Uh, look us up. We're SWFL uh, Young Republicans. Like us on our page. Um, that way you can communicate with us, get involved, be more active. Instead and you've of got a, and, on Facebook and you know, and, you, and you've got just, a lot of chat groups, right? You got a lot of, a lot of right. stuff that you you guys uh, promote. You'll have different questions. Uh, we prom- we'll promote any conservative or Republican group out there in the community. So not for you, Smitty. No, <laughs> you are not uh, allowed. I'm a conservative. I'm a moderate. <laughs> a moderate. I'm a moderate. <laughs> If he's a moderate, I'm not allowed. Just if he's say, a moderate, I'm just going to I'm I'm just gonna show up. Like I, just wanna sh- I just want to show up to hear your strategy. That's what I want to hear. I was just telling you some of it. Right I know. Now. I just got to hear it in full, in full regalia. I okay. got to see it, man. It's going to be amazing. Well, then you'll have to attend. I will. I'm going to attend. It's not far from where I live, so I might have to okay. ride around the corner there. Great. So you said you wanted to post where you live? No, I said I was <laughs> no, Well, if you live up north, they might they might post your whereabouts. That's right, they're going to post your whereabouts. Well, luckily in the state of Florida, we don't register our firearms, so they don't have this this uh, list that they can post yeah, for all the criminals to know where we live. Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know that list is just uh, there's some new new things that came out today about. Uh, Prisoners using that list uh, to intimidate guards because hey, we know where your family lives now. That's unreal. Man. What are the prisoners doing online? <laughs> That's hey, a good our point. System, they can get online. What the heck? I, I got friends TV. that are locked up, and I and I, I told him about it. I can't even go see them. They got like a video camera. You got to go talk. That's to because your friends did really, really, really <laughs> bad crimes. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they don't let them talk to people. Well, they're not white collar crimes. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right, so what else? Now, Ricky, this uh, this place that, that the elections are at on the 8th, and what time is it? Uh, 6.30 on Tuesday. At Do- well, how do you say it? Well, Daruma? this is a Chinese uh, a steakhouse and sushi lounge. So it's it's a really uh, a kind of like a private setting. It's really uh, we're going to be tucked away in the back so we can actually strategize, talk about issues that we want to talk about. Do they have liquor there? Up with the- yeah. Okay, sweet. <laughs> of course. It's, a, a plus. it's the main thing for, right. for right. every political standing. <laughs> you got liquor? In the you got my vote. the idea so much Better. Well, back, does. back in the day, they used to buy votes by giving out liquor. That's right. That's really? Right. Yeah. They used to buy votes. They would get my vote. I'm sure. Probably. Bob was doing that, too. Remember that whole beer uh, beer summit? The thing. beer yeah, summit? that's right. Apparently, well, apparently that was a good strategy. He did was, win. wasn't it? Just let you know. Gave out some coat. 45. <laughs> <laughs> the beast. <laughs> anyway. All right. So what else you got up there, Ricky? You got anything, anything big com- coming up or what? Um, just it's, our election meeting. All right. Um, so if, if not, then... I'm, you know, Chris. I know I, 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 we brought you guys in. I, I want to talk about. We got a few topics we can get into today. We got fiscal cliff. We got more on gun control. And, and you just right. brought up something. You know, so I was going to go into 
fiscal cliff first. But since you know, since you brought up what you did with this list, I'd say let's go into gun control because it, even though the topic came up a few weeks ago after the Newtown, Connecticut shooting, um, you know that that's what really brought it to light uh, this time, even more so than the than the Batman theater shooting. You know, you thought that this would go away, or, or folks did. Yeah, no, just the opposite. There's it's eight, getting bigger. First, uh, first day of the session of Congress, eight bills have been filed uh, wow. related to gun control. Yeah, I mean, did you see, you know, the do Illinois... Do you support any of them? I do. None? I support Representative Massey's bill, which actually repeals federal gun zone laws around schools. Yes, I like that one, too. And if you if you, if you you read into that, um, basically what that means is, you've and, and, and Chris hit it right on the head... You've got federal gun control laws that say that, that guns are not a- allowed you know, within certain distances to schools, whether it's on mm. the property or 1,000 feet or whatever it may be. Kind of like the pedophile rule. You're not supposed to I think so. Right. Yeah, probably, sure. probably similar. Um, but if you look at the, you know, some of the mass shootings, they're occurring in these gun-free zones. Yeah. So that isn't working. Well, I, you know? I saw the other uh, the last night on the news. I only caught a piece of it. Right. But, uh, uh, Rick Scott had a study, and they looked at uh, what it would take to put a two-person at each school in Florida, now, I, I don't know if it's chartered schools, private schools. I don't know if it included everybody, but they said it's about sixty-five million dollars to do it. And um, I don't know, maybe we can get a uh, fundraiser or something. Start some well, I don't know that. if we need a fundraiser. Sixty-five yeah, million. See. Think about that. Think about how how cheap that is compared to. There was already one lawsuit brought against the state of Connecticut mm-hmm. um, for this shooting. It was a hundred million dollar lawsuit. From one attorney wow. for one child. <clears throat> so you're, if we could spend $65 million to put armed guards at the schools. But, but, but you got to remember, even in Columbine, they had an armed guard there, and it didn't help. So this is the argument that people will well, make. Well, here's the thing. Say, oh, if you got two guys and you're going to go in there and attack somebody, you're going to shoot him first. Yeah, but if the armed guard <laughs> if the armed guard is the is the resource officer walking the school or in his office in the back corner of the school, yeah. that's too far away. Yeah. We need someone at the front door, at the entrance. They said, you know, they said one in front, one in the back. Just something. Right. Yeah, wherever the entrances yeah. are, put them there. Yeah. I mean, that's going to stop someone from wanting to go in there and do that. 277-9600 or 775-9600. Give us a call. You know, in each one of these cases, the, the attacks and massacres have happened in areas where there's already assault weapon bans, gun mm-hmm. control is the strictest uh, you could find. So that policy is not working either. We, yeah. That's true. I mean, I was going to bring up the point that, um, you know, and I don't even have the ar- article in front of me. I'll get it. But Chicago had like 532 deaths, murders last year. Um, and it's got the some of the strictest gun control laws in the country. They, right. it, 500 right. and something murders. Yeah, but how many of those are related to guns? Almost all of them. Really? Almost yeah, all of them. Related. Yeah, yeah, yeah gun related. It was actually, that is the stats, gun related. It's got this, some of the strictest gun control laws. So, does, yeah. so did Washington, D.C. I saw something the other day that you're less likely to be killed in Iraq in a war zone per capita than Washington, D.C. I, I think maybe they have. They should pick three states and make them the test states. We'll take Florida and say, as many guns as you want. We'll load the guns up. We'll take, say, another comparable state. I don't know, pick one, maybe Tennessee, and say, okay, you can't have guns. Make a couple of test states. <laughs> well, and we've see, already got, see which one uh, does well, it better. Already, we've already, we've already got Connecticut. Kind of right. Yeah, we've already got um, states that don't have, you know, that have laws against guns. Sure. Those states have the highest yeah. gun, yeah. Uh, you know, gun murder rates. That's New York so, City. Had, uh, it's York. a terrible, terrible yeah. situation. Let's take a call real quick. I've got uh, line one sick. Rick got Brian from Fort Myers. You're on the Ledge Radio Show. I, I really don't believe that they, that statistic from Iraq. Really? That's what he's saying. He's Sorry, man. Calling you out. I, I, I don't. I don't believe it. But okay. also, you don't I mean, have to believe it. There's always going to be holes, and, you know, yeah, the, the resurface officer could be doing something in the back of the school. He could be in the front of the school in his office. He right. could come in the back gate. I mean, there's always going to be holes, and, you know, but you know what? It's it's good that, you know, you don't have a crazy parent or everything, because how do you know who these parents are pulling up, and then all of a sudden road rage happens at the bus stop? Uh-huh. Or, or at the bus so, so what he's saying, there's going to be residual damage that's not related to just attacking a, a kid or some mass yeah. murder. There's going to be some guy who pulls up with a gun who gets in a, you know, the pistol match and, and then shoots somebody. somebody else. Right. And they're not supposed to have their gun in their car. You know, and I'm sure that 99% of those parents that have a concealed weapon, they probably have their gun in their car. They're not telling everybody. There's people that have, I mean, you're talking about a random in the middle of the day. There's not going to be private citizens in the middle of the day. The nine out of ten schools are locked down all day long every day. And it's even worse now. 
Well, I, well, I would I agree. That, uh, and we can't. We we work for the fire department. Show up in a fire truck, and we can't walk in the camp. Yeah, I heard that incident where that guy uh, right. called the the uh, set the thing with fire, and then the police. I mean, the fire guys came. Then he pot shot shot him. That's crazy. Well, that's well, something. That's something totally yeah. different. If we go to school, there's only one entrance we can get in. Right. If we've got to get to someone in the back of the classroom. Some kids hurt. We've got to go all the way around the front of school. Get all the way around the back because right. the whole school is locked down. This is the environment. That our, that our that our culture, that our society has created for our kids. We should be looking at ourselves, not necessarily the government. We should be looking at ourselves. Exactly. What are we I would agree. Our yeah, kids? I think people need to start. Well, uh, I, I mean, what's your the parents? What's I mean, the your? Parents are the ones that are. I don't know if I if I get. I mean, I see where you're going with this, uh, Brian, and, and you know, we, and we do appreciate your call. Um, but are you saying that you don't you don't think that armed um, police or something yeah, like that will work at the schools? Police officers at the schools. There should be. You know, okay. depending on if the elementary and middle school, as the kids get older, I think that maybe, maybe I mean, because I, I work in Collier County. Jay, do you know who I am? Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post your address. Our has a minimum of two or three deputies <laughs> right. every day at that high school. Okay. I mean, that's something that the sheriff down there has said this is something he wants. It's implemented. It's, it's in place. It's just there. Well, Sheriff that's Sheriff Rambosk is very, I mean, he's very... Uh, uh, forward thinking when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, he definitely cares about the security of the children. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had him on the show before, and 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 we can we know just by knowing him that that's the way he wants things. He wants those kids protected as much as he can. Exactly. So, and it, and it needs to be an officer, someone you know, not not a military walking around with an AR-15. That's that would work the, though. That's not the that's not the environment I want my child to grow up in. Well, if I wanted my child to grow up in that environment. I would move to Iraq. I would move to Israel. I would move to a country like that. Well, un- we're, we're, unfortunately, we're, the uh, the Connecticut shooting, people actually moved there because the education program was the best in the nation and the safest in the nation, and it happened there. It, just, it, was, it was a random, crazy thing that happened. We, we should be pointing the finger at the mother, the one who got shot. Why yeah, did she right. not lock her guns up? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, you know, and we can point at her all day, but she is dead now. Hmm. And you Well, know. this is true, but that... Yeah. that that should be a wake-up call to everybody who has weapons, including myself. That I have a teenage son in my house. Sure. My guns are locked up. And I think I think I I might have said it a couple shows ago that it takes a lot of guts, man, to step back and look at your own kids and go, "Man, you're nuts." I'm getting some help for you. You know. Yeah. It takes exactly. a lot of self-reflection, a little deep thanks, thought. Thanks, Brian, for your call, buddy. Think, I appreciate Brian, it, man. Thanks, Brian. I think, I think Brian made a good point there. Hi, buddy. He made a good point there, too, in that uh, no amount of laws, no amount of regulations is going to stop a random act that just you right, know, right. is some random occurrence, well, and, and it, you can't regulate against everything. That's, and, and, that's and, the age, and the age group is 16 to 24. That's so. something we mentioned the other, you know, a couple shows ago, was that basically what law, what law could have been in place to stop that, and there really isn't one. No. The only thing that could have stopped that is a good guy with a gun. That's exactly. it. When you've got a random shooting like that, someone comes up to the school, if you've got an armed guard at the front, and they can, you know, hopefully they can see what you've got as you're walking up. I don't know if the kid had it concealed or what he was doing, but that's the only way to stop something like well, that. Well, we also need a lot more responsible parents locking their guns up in a safe. Very true. I, w- I would completely agree. Uh, 277-9600, 775-9600, if you've got a comment or a concern about this as well. Uh, but, you know, there's been, and, and because of this situation, we've got senators and state reps and, you know, every, every politician in, in just coming out of the woodwork, with their own idea of how to solve this. And almost every one of the ideas is round up the guns. Yeah, it's just the worst way to govern. It's reactionary government, and it's, it's well, not what, the way to pass the law. What do you think, what do you think about solution. registering that gun with, like you do a car? You get a title, you get a register, you sell that gun, you have a title. It's all, it's all tracked. What, is it, would that help at all? I mean, at, at what point do you go, we that, don't want to do anything? There's another regulation yeah. on top of that one, and on top of that one, it's just it's never ending. It's I've got a through. bunch of them to go through, and let's take another call. Um, line one sick, Rick, I've got... Uh, we got Rob on line one on the Ledge Radio Show. Rob, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good, good, Bravo. good. So what, what do you think about this, man? Well, you know, there's a number of, let's say, Florida citizens that have concealed weapons permits. They're yes. responsible, and the fact is a permitted concealed carry person commits less felonies than law enforcement officers. Some of these people are employed as teachers and you know never or always carry never tell i'm not saying arm the teachers i'm saying let these people that have these permits um you know 
carry out their Second Amendment right. Sure. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. That's, that's what Tech, I've been saying, too. Virginia Tech would have been stopped. Columbine could have been stopped. Uh, Connecticut could have been stopped. Could have. I'm not saying. Uh, that, that's a stretch, though, man. Well, no, I, I don't think it is no. a stretch. I think that I think that Rob is absolutely correct. I mean, like I said, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. The laws don't do it. Right. So one other little uh, one little other tidbit is with all the gun control strictness, this and that, Columbine happened during the last gun control uh, assault weapons ban. It absolutely did. That is correct. That's a, that's a good point to make. And you know, and I mean, you just all you got to do is is look at the facts here. In the in these areas where this occurs, it occurs in areas where guns are not allowed. The the law already says you, you, it's already in a gun ban area. What about restricting the so, guns with with the major clips with the? Why? Huge What's ammo? the difference? I mean, because you can wipe you out all, a billion well, people, well, here, man. Hang on, in like a, a, all two guns. Minutes. Yeah, but all guns were restricted from this area. No gun was allowed to be here. Yet yeah. it still happened. You know, so and, restricting the size of a gun a gun magazine is not going to help. It will and, help. I think it will help. More that point, every every shooting in the last sixty years I has been in an. Uh, Area where guns are not allowed, with the exception of Giffords in Arizona. Yeah. What were you saying, buddy? Rob, sorry about that. I was going to say, you know, if you ban the clip sizes, then they're going to have beautiful, you look like a Chewbacca with a bandolier of five round clips. Yeah. And you simply go to the range and practice swapping them out, swapping them out, swapping them out. Yeah. It's stopping harder prison sentences, makes quit the country club crap, mm. and uh, uh, to just simply make it unappealing to even want to think about something like this and nip it in the bud. I agree, buddy. Well, hey, man. Got problems. Good point. Hey, thanks so, thanks for your call, Rob, and keep up the good work out there, keeping everybody safe, man. I appreciate it. You got it, brother. See you on the next one. You All got man. it, man. Take care. All right, guys, we're going to uh, head to break. Uh, when we get back, we'll get more into in-depth. Into fiscal some cliff. Gun control, oh. fiscal cliff. <laughs> Going off the cliff. 277-9600, 775-9600 when we get back. Weekends. Picture me. Tiny bikini, straps undone, ice cold beer in hand, and blaring the best damn classic rock, period. Every weekend on 96K Rock, we shut up and rock. Led Zeppelin, ACDC, ZZ Tom, Leonard Skinner, Aerosmith, GNR, Bon Jovi. If it makes my ass shake and makes my beer taste better, we play it. All attitude, all the time. 96K Rock Weekends, rock. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services leave Charlotte and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Come to Duncan's Diamonds and experience our Rolex watches, treasured estate timepieces on sale. Save up to 50% on all of our men's and ladies' Rolex watches. Fort Myers, U.S. 41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center. C-O-O-M-T-A-N. I was tan last summer, now I'm pale again. I need a little bit of help to be ready for the beach soon. Tan puts some within my reach. Brown as a biscuit for $9.99. ZoomTan.com for a limited time. ZoomTan has 25 locations throughout Florida. Go to ZoomTan.com for a location near you and for a free spray tan coupon. That's ZoomTan.com. Why be pale and pasty when you can be tan and tasty? I'm Mike Chinopoulos from Absolute Law. I'm proud to say that I had the opportunity to serve our country as an infantry officer in the United States Army. I'm proud to say I've had the opportunity to serve our justice system as a judge. And now I'm proud to say that I have the opportunity to serve our community as a lawyer, helping make things right for those who need me. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's contributed to our success in this community. We wish you and your families happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, and a prosperous New Year. From Absolute Law, a law firm you can trust. 
Absolutely. Offers with approved credit, twenty three ninety nine due at signing, plus tax tag title. Sonata includes five hundred dollar loyalty, five hundred dollar military, fifteen hundred dollar holiday bonus cash, twenty four ninety five dealer, no security deposit required. The new year is here. It's time to lose weight, get in shape, get out of debt, hold everything. You can do all three at O'Brien Hyundai of Fort Myers. Lose the weight of a high car payment with 2013 Sonata lease payments as low as $169 a month. Get your bank account in shape with no down payments. And O'Brien Hyundai will help you get out of debt with 0% financing and up to five grand in savings. It's O'Brien Hyundai's resolution solution. Choose from over 300 vehicles on the lot. And you always get America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and Hyundai assurance. Don't wait another Another minute. Come get your resolution solution now. Get to O'Brien Hyundai of Fort Myers, just two miles west off I-75 on Colonial Boulevard, or click O'BrienTeamHyundai.com. You should be buying from O'Brien. Should be buying. It's that time of year again when Total Nutrition wants to help you reach your goal this new year, and they're doing it with their annual buy one get one 50% off or buy two get one free sale. Stop into any one of their six convenient locations and let one of their certified sports nutritionists customize a plan for you. In Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Naples, and Fort Charlotte. Total Nutrition's annual buy one, get one 50% off or buy two, get one free sale. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. Julian, technician with Safe Light Auto Glass. What makes Safe Light different? Well, with Safe Light, you get the reliability of America's largest auto glass company. Every windshield we replace is backed by the only national lifetime guarantee, keeping you covered coast to coast. Plus, a new windshield is the perfect time to get new windshield wipers. Safe Light can do that too. Just call 800 800 2727 or go to safelight.com or ask your insurance company for Safe Light. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with Jamie and Smitty on 96K Rock Talk of the Rocks. Welcome back. The phone numbers are 239 277 9600 or 775 9600. You can send us an email. JD or Smitty at the Ledge Radio Show.com. Check out our live stream at the Ledge Radio Show.com. Let's get to a couple callers that are holding through the break. Appreciate get, it. Got uh, Smitty's buddy here on uh, line one, <laughs> Pete from St. Pete. Pete, you're on the Ledge Radio Show. Yeah, hi. Hi, you guys. What's Good up, morning. my friend? Hey, turn on your radio, hey, Pete. I've heard some, uh, uh, what I call limited logic going on here. Well, you just started uh, talking. About the random shootings. Of course, you cannot legislate. Uh, mad, crazy people from Correct. doing violence, but you can legislate how they do their violence. Okay. I own a shotgun. It has four cli- uh, four bullets in the clip. Where do you live? And I will, I will guarantee. I will, I will have a duel with anybody because it only takes one shot, my friend. I'm with you. You don't have to have 150 bullets. Hey Pete. Uh, that would eliminate the violence. Hey that Pete. Probably he probably would have killed maybe one kid, or God forbid that. But, hey, hey Pete. Yes. I just I just don't want to die from lack of shooting back. So if I can have a hundred round magazine, that's what I need. Yeah. I, well, that uh, it's good for you because thank you. you're not uh, mentally ill. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. I try not to be. But you have but you have limited uh, limited logic. Uh, that's maybe. right. I agree, it's, Pete. I agree, Pete. You were blaming the mother. Blame the people who sold the gun, mother. Oh, blame. blame. One more step, and then blame oh, hang the on. Republican legislators uh-huh. who allowed them to sell the gun. The hey, Pete. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I got. I got a good. I got a good analogy for you. Let's blame Ford for selling. Had a good analogy, but go ahead. Let's let's sell Ford. For selling cars to people who drink and drive. Oh man! That's the analogy you, you just used. An analogy. Come the, on, that's like a that, ridiculous. That's an exact that's parallel a, analogy. That's what you just said, Pete. That's what it's like trying to deal with him. He can't reason anything. Why does a kindergarten teacher need a assault rifle with 150 bullet magazine? So they can you know, so they can kill bad guys. A shotgun or a pistol with six shots. Well, get that sure. They will defend anybody. You don't uh, need massive arm fire. He can only shoot a few people. I, I'm, I'm, will, I'm, I'm with you, Pete. I'm I'd let, with I'd you. Let, I'd let a kindergartner teacher have the shotgun if she wants it. That's fine. I think yeah, it'll work out fine. Why should she have an assault rifle? Right? That's what I'm saying. Take it back one more step, J.D. Yeah. Who gave these laws? The only purpose of the NRA is to sell 
guns. Well, the gun industry. Right. Wasn't it yeah. you that said that they were the terrorist organization? Oh, yeah. They yeah. definitely are. Look at the terror. Look at the results. Absolutely. You know, that's terror. Hey, Pete. You know, terrorize. Tell it's a terrorize. Pete, Pete, I know a lot of people agree with you. J.D. ain't going to be one of them. That's no. all. No, anybody that... No, that J.D. JD voted for Romney, so... We, yeah, that's we true. Know he has that's that's true. We know he's already defeated. Any, anybody that believes in the Second Amendment, unfortunately, won't agree with you, Pete. Sorry about that, well, man. I agree with the Second Amendment. Oh, clearly. Uh, <laughs> uh, back to muzzle, muzzle loaders, then, you know? Okay. Uh, hey, really pure. hey, Pete, thanks, thanks, thanks for your call, buddy. buddy. We appreciate it, we man. Should, we should probably also mention that the shooting My did boy, happen... Pete from Tampa! The shooting happened in a state where there's uh, Democrat controlled with strict gun laws and... Uh, yeah. In a gun-free zone. Yeah, yeah that's right. It, there's well, there's zero lying. Republicans up there. Let's take another call. We got uh, line two. Tommy, Tommy, you're on the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I, well, I grew up in a regular neighborhood, and I mean, I'm all for you know, I mean, possibly even teachers, you know, start having guns in a school, and I wouldn't mind my kids going there. I mean, I'd be better. I'd sleep better at night, you know, knowing that there is somebody there that's you know. Uh, res- up with a gun that can stop one of these crazy ass kids from running up in the school and shooting my yeah. you know, my son or my daughter. You know, Tommy, one of the one of the callers previous to you, uh, Brian, he said that, and I wanted to touch on it. He was on the air, but I'm glad you brought that up. He said he did not want he didn't like the environment of his child going to a school with maybe a military uh, person there, you know, somebody from the army with a weapon with an AR-15. But you know what? I'd much rather have my child go to the school with that guy. Than not be able to go to school because he was killed in a school shooting, so that that's like, the I difference. Mean, I remember when they started putting uh, security guards in schools, and I mean, I didn't show up and be traumatized, you know, right? Because there's a cop there with a gun. No, you know, you, you know, know what did. What you mean? lived. You lived. That's yeah. what happened. You lived yeah. to fight you know, another you know, day. You know what traumatized me? It was it was the Catholic priest. Priest. <laughs> I'm sure they <laughs> did. <laughs> more damage to anybody than it did. He traumatizes kids all day long. All right, That's Tommy. Sure. Hey, we appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for the call, man. Thanks for listening. No problem. All right. I mean, that, but that's the, that's the bottom line, though. You know, and, and Tommy, he makes a good point. And, and I think, I know where Brian was coming from earlier. You know, he, we, we want to be able to send our kids to a school that's nice and friendly and it feels good. But you know what? I'd rather my child be, know that my child's going to be as safe as they could be. It doesn't mean that something can't happen because you can't protect against everything. Yeah, you can't, do you right. can't, you can't build a building thinking that it's going to withstand a plane crash and it's not going to topple. You know, so well, you know the president feels safe when he has the Secret Service protecting him, right? And right. what does he protect him with? They protect him with guns. Oh right? yeah, fully automatic weapons. Right. We don't and we, he's not got one. Now we two, we can get 50. them. Yeah, we can get fully automatic weapons, but we have to pay the the tax stamp. You got to get the sheriff to approve it or own it by a trust. I mean and and not to mention the fact that those weapons are 10, 15, 20 grand for a single fully automatic weapon. So I can go to the Walmart and buy a semi-automatic weapon for maybe a thousand bucks, you know, twelve hundred dollars, something like that, if I got the money uh, to spend on it. And if that's what I need to protect my family or to do what it is, whatever it is I want to do with that weapon, whether it's with a ten-round magazine or a hundred-round magazine, there's nothing that the federal constitution says or the Bill of Rights that says that I can't do that. But you've got these senators and House representatives that are doing their best to take away our rights and to keep us from protecting ourselves. How can disarming citizens keep us safe? Because the, the, the gang members, the criminals, they don't turn in their guns. I mean... Exactly right. And they buy them off the streets, too. I mean, that's a whole... Yeah, I mean, here, here's something right here from the Illinois... Um, you got an Illinois Dem, uh, Illinois uh, Senate Democrats advanced legislation Wednesday to restrict semi-automatic weapons and high-capacity magazines, pressing forward with new gun control measures in the waning days of the session over the objections of firearms groups. Now, Chicago already bans most weapons, and they've worked. It's worked so well for them. Yeah, yeah they had 532 gun-related deaths in 2012. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Maybe if you gave the citizens the right to carry a gun, they could have defended themselves against these criminals that had weapons. But instead, they choose to go further past the point of no return. That doesn't make any sense. And here's something else. There, there would be no exemptions, no grandfathering. You'd have a very short window to turn in your guns to state police to avoid prosecutions. So with no grandfathering, it doesn't mean if you've already bought one and you've had it in your family or you've got it. You have to literally go turn it into the cops. That's, that's what Hitler did. Hitler made the Jews turn in their guns. What happened to them? It wasn't good. 
And the gangs aren't going to be turning in numbers, mm, I'm sure. Right. No, the, all these gun buyback programs we talked about on the show here, you know, a couple weeks ago. Oakland, California did a, did a gang uh, did a gun buyback program. Not one gang member turned in their gun. Only regular citizens, the, you know, the the people that were not criminals turned the in their people? guns. <laughs> I mean, the decent people, yeah, the decent exactly. people, the regular, you know, the non gang members. So the gangs, it doesn't work. When you tell the gangs to turn their guns, they don't do it. Well, be interesting why would you turn in? Why, the law. That's what they're used why to. Why would an electrician turn in his yeah. turn in his wire strippers and a screwdriver? That's his tool. To a gang member, that's his tool. It's, it's his weapon. It's going to be right. interesting to find out after this study goes with Biden and trying to get this gun study where, what he's going to recommend. It's going to be interesting to see where, how far will he go? You know, he may just go well. You know. Well, luckily Obama gave it to him. I mean, because he is the yeah. dumbest, pretty much the dumbest man on the planet. Well, he's the vice president. He can't be that stupid. <clears throat> well, I, I, <laughs> he, he, I, I give you that. I give you that. But I, all I can say is look for the, look at the people who voted for him, oh. and that's your answer. Apparently, he bamboozled Boehner on the on the fiscal cliff, so he can't be that stupid. Smart as a fox. Well, let me get in. I want to I want to get something real quick. Sick Rick, how much time we got? About three four minutes. Um, let's go to uh, cut one. If you got that one queued up. This is Diane Feinstein back in 95 trying to push through the assault weapons ban. Listen to how radical she wanted to go back then. Go ahead, Sick Rick, cut one. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. What do you think? I think fortunately there were enough uh, senators that actually might respect the Constitution to stop yeah, that. But that was in '95, so I don't know if she still believes that. I mean, yeah, she she just she just put this, forward another the, the another take, ban to, the ba all the to guns. make it worse than the last ban mm -hmm. to make it more How can stringent. You take, make it worse than taking all the guns away. No, <laughs> obviously in '95 they didn't take all the guns away. She she didn't have the votes for it. The new no. legislation she's putting together now uh -huh. is worse than the one that was passed in 95. No. It also mm -hmm. takes away the grandfathering. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do like the Illinois Democrats are doing. I mean, could you imagine? You know, we've said we've said for weeks now, or we've heard for weeks now, oh, the police will never show up to your door and say, give us your guns. Well, mm -hmm. shoot, in Illinois, that's the exact legislation they're, they're trying to pass. And, and in their state, it's ran by Democrats. They can get it approved. Regardless of what the people want, they can get that approved. If they have the majority... If they've got the majority and they're not afraid of the the NRA or the lobbyists or whatever, you know, who who are going to uh, put out negative campaign ads uh, about them in and the next election. Yeah, the, the NRA is too powerful, man. They never, they never have. I don't think they're powerful. that powerful. I mean, you've got obviously they weren't powerful enough. Look at look what happened in '95, and Columbine happened after that gun ban. Yeah. Hopefully, Congress will, will take a stand and and keep that from passing in their house. Yeah. Well, I, I don't I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, uh, we're counting on you, Trey. Yeah, that's true. Okay. On you, Trey. Yeah, that's true. We we did see uh, photos of uh, Trey Radel, our uh, U.S. congressman, up at the uh, Capitol over the last couple of days. Yeah, um, sworn this in. morning, what on the third, a couple days ago, yesterday, yeah. no, two days, ago. two days ago. He's corrupted by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Been there Sorry, two days. Ted, it was nice meeting you when you were normal. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> the first real vote was really the relief of the Sandy storm that happened. On oh, the was East it? Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what? did he have to vote? I didn't even look into this. Did he have to vote for Banner? Was that one yes, of his he votes? That's uh, the he did vote for him. Well, you know, that's uh, just the game of politics. I mean, if you look at it, I he mean, won by two votes. He can't vote against that's Banner. Because yeah. if he votes against Banner, he can't really make anything pass. If yeah. you really think about that's it, that's right. So if you alienate, you if you alienate your, party. if you alienate right. your boss and your yeah. party, and that's how the party works. It Banner's does. like every Banner party, is, both parties work that way. Banner is an Indian chief with no tribe. <laughs> He's out on an island by himself, man. There was no no real challenger to him for the speakership, no. so there was I, you know, no choice but to vote for him. I kept hearing rumors. That Cantor would be the next <laughs> the choice. Oh, that's that's hilarious. Hilarious. I would have loved it. And, and the, when Cantor, TV, you're not normal, when Cantor <laughs> heard when Cantor heard the votes were that there were three or four votes for him, he was actually disgruntled about it. He was upset right. that the vote. But I'm sure that's well, just for show. Well, he'll turn back on right. those three or four people too, because really? they're not going to be able to pass anything. I'm pretty sure of it. They're I mean, that's in Northern Virginia. Works. Northern Virginia. Yeah. Okay, that's Arlington Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we're coming up on a hard break. Um, we hey, push. Get, we're going to get some tickets away real quick. While we're going you want to do it again? Yeah, yeah, while we're going on Heartbreak, we're going to get right. a four tickets away. you got to call up. You're going to be the sixth six caller, and you got to say, I want to see the walleye. I want to see the walleyes coming to see the Everblades. They're coming uh, Wednesday. Is that also on the ninth? Uh, no, yep, the ninth. And, uh, the pack sixth, of four? Yep, pack of four, and take your kids, have a good time. 277-9600, 9600 Six callers. Say, I want the walleye. I want the walleye. There you go. We'll be right back. 
96 K Rock supports Southwest Florida's bikers with the Biker Map. Hey, this is Chris from the Biker Map. The Biker Map is in over 500 locations, and if you can't find it, just go to thebikermap.com. The Biker Map. Grab a copy by stopping by K Rock Broadcasts and always at the K Rock Studios in Estero. I just want to say thank you to Southwest Florida and all the advertisers for supporting all the motorcycle riders out there. The Biker Map. And be sure to be on the lookout for the all new The Boater Map from 96 K Rock and 96 K Rock.com. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services lead Charlotte and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Rock Solid wants you to be our customer. Rock Solid Countertops and more is your supermarket for countertops, flooring, and cabinets. Complete granite kitchens from $9.99 installed. Bring us your best offer and we will beat it. And if that weren't enough, Rock Solid is now giving away a free countertop system every month. Are they crazy? A free countertop every month? That's right. Just come in and register. No purchase necessary. So if I win and it costs $9.99, it costs me nothing? That's right. Zip, nada, nothing. And if it costs $2,500, it still costs me nothing? That's right. Zip, nada. Nada, nothing. So come in and register today at Rock Solid. Just one more way. Rock Solid shows they are crazy, crazy about customer satisfaction. Off airport pulling on JNC Boulevard in Naples. When coming to see us, look for the Superman sign guy. Call 596-7676 or visit HugeCreditSale.com. Rock Solid countertops and more. It's really big. What are you thinking? What are you thinking about all these dinky donkey dealers over there on 41? Half of them, their daddy gave them the business. Half of them were out playing golf. Half, you know, that's the same old story I hear everywhere. And here we are, you just on 2013. We're over here in the Cape, grinding like regular people, Caroline. That's what it's all about. We're with the people. You know, there are a lot of And then things... tonight at 12 o'clock, we're going to go party with the people, Caroline. We get the Absolutely. whole ball of wax here. And then about 3 o'clock, we maybe we'll do something else like the other people. But, Caroline, we're with the people. That's right. One of the things that makes us stand out here at Fusilokia of Cape Coral, one of the many, many things that make us stand out is that we are open seven days a week. We don't shut down one day of the week or sometimes two days of the week. We are here every single day of the week because we know that your Jack schedule. In the paper, can't... I'm open 11 to 3 on Sunday. What yeah. a cartoon character. I mean, you don't want to have to arrange your life around purchasing a vehicle. It's all about being vehicles. huge, Caroline, as you well know. Huge. When we built ForThePeople.com, it was designed to be your consumer website. A place to go to learn about your legal rights. It was also built to protect you before an accident occurs. One of the most helpful parts of our site is warnings about unsafe drugs, products, and medical devices. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Right now, we're investigating, and in some cases, actually litigating cases involving some of these drugs you may be currently taking or have taken in the past and likewise certain medical devices. I invite you to visit ForThePeople.com now and from time to time to educate yourself and hopefully protect you and your family. This site was built for you, the consumer. And remember this, I'm not just a lawyer, I'm your lawyer. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. Offices, Fort Myers, and Naples. From the huge studios, WRXK, Bonita Springs, Naples, Fort Myers, a Beasley Broadcast Group station, 96K Rock and 96KRock.com. Talk that rocks. Get off the ledge! Get off the ledge! This country should. Oh, 
come in the morning. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? Don't you mind about the future? And now, live, unedited, unrehearsed, and unapologetic, straight off the ledge, it's J.D. and Smitty! Welcome to the second hour. Phone lines are open, 277-9600, or for the viewers around the world watching live streaming video on the Ledge Cam, 239-775-9600. Visit our website and blog at theledgeradioshow.com, or find us on Facebook. Oh, welcome, South ba- Southwest Florida. The second, sure? Yeah, I'm stumbling here, man. i got a headache. The second hour is brought to you by Our Imperial headache. Fire Alarm and Security. For all your fire alarm security, CCTV needs, or access control needs, look for them on the web or, or Imperial Fire Alarm Security today, 288-6482, or visit them at imperialfiresecurity.com. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security, securing your world. All right, thanks a lot, Smitty. And we got a winner on line three. Uh, Victoria, you are the winner of the Everblaze tickets. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, I want the walleye, guys. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> the walleye. <clears throat> All right, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for being a winner. Hang on the line. Uh, Tripod Billy's going to get your information, and uh, you can come pick up your tickets here at the studio. Have a good time, man. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, All right take right, care. Thank you so much. That's actually not a bad deal. I mean, those tickets aren't cheap these days. No, no, I don't know what they're good I mean, they're probably, say. I don't know, 15 20 bucks a piece, something like that. Probably. So that's, that's not bad. Probably eighty yeah. eighty dollar value right there. Sure, and like I say, you spend some some really good wholesome time with your kid. You yeah. know, or, we enjoy or, it. or your significant other, and you go out and you have a good time. You know, so it's it's not bad. Yeah. Well, hey, let's uh, before we jump into Fiscal Cliff, and I got some stuff on Al Gore we want to get into with uh, current TV being sold out Al-, Al Jazeera. Uh, let's take another call. <clears throat> good. Yep. Line one, Junior. You're on the Lead Radio Show with Daniel Smitty. Junior. Junior, are you there, buddy? Yes, I am. All right, what you got for us, man? I just wanted to talk to him about the gun, the, the gun stuff they were talking about. All right, sure. What's you, what's your thought on that? What's my thought on that right there? Well, as a as a law-abiding citizen that actually is one of the people that have the concealed weapon permit in the state of Florida. Me too, buddy. Does try to call it. Uh huh. How you done? Good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Put down the pipe. Walk away. No, I'm 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 on your side, man. I I got my Hold permit on. too. Me too. Oh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to listen to the radio. <laughs> Don't listen to radio. Listen to the phone, man. <laughs> uh, no, what I was going to say was that uh, as a law-abiding citizen down here, I, I'm the one of the ones that does have a concealed weapon permit and everything like that in the state of Florida. You ought to visit the okay? House of Mirrors. But as a law-abiding citizen that tries to, do, to try to do everything legally and keep my nose clean and everything like that, right there, I'm the one that has the limitations on where I can carry my gun. That's true. That's true. Whereas all these all these guys that are criminals and all this other stuff and everything like that, they don't have any limitations on where they can carry it. And as far as like the guy from St. Petersburg, Florida, there that said that they need to go back to the people that sold that woman the gun and stuff like that. There, why does a school teacher need to buy a gun like that? Because the Constitution gives her the right to buy a gun like that. I would agree. And, and exactly. Okay? You know. And as far as all these legislators and everything like that that want to ban this and ban that and and do this and do that and everything like that. If I go through the stuff where I have to uh, be fingerprinted, I have to prove myself to the federal government that I'm a a, a decent citizen and I pay all my money and stuff like that to get a concealed weapon permit and everything like that, but yet I'm the one that's limited to where I can carry my gun with me. I would agree, buddy. Did you have to go through a psychological test to get that test? Uh, No, I didn't have to take a psychological test, but uh, (laughs) I've been around guns my whole entire life and and I, I know how to use them and where to use them and when to use them. All right, buddy. Well, just uh, keep us safe out there. I'm with you on that. Um, I, I would agree with you. Thanks for the call. Thanks for listening, man. That's a good. Right, thank you very much. Uh, a gun but he's, he's he's correct. I mean, you know, the people that have their licenses have their concealed permit. We are the ones that have to obey the laws. And and uh, someone earlier called in. Uh, Rob from uh, Naples called in, I believe, and he said that uh, uh, per capita that your concealed weapons permit holders they are less likely to have any type of background issues. Because we have to go through the background checks. We, we can't have felonies on our records. And he actually had a stat. I don't know if it was um, something he was reading or what, or if he misspoke, but it sounded pretty interesting. He said that uh, per capita that the uh, concealed weapon permit holders, you know, the people that are licensed to carry, they actually had fewer um, crimes on their records than, hmm. than actual deputies. Actual cops. Because we respect uh, the law. I suppose so. Yeah. So, that you know, that's an interesting stat as well. I mean, uh, very rarely do you see it's one of the actual concealed weapon permit 
carrier or someone is carrying it legally right. that's doing these mass shootings. So to go after their rights is is insane. But that's typical of the Democrat Party. They, you know, they they like to go after the innocent, uh, you know, person. I think the Democrats assume that everyone's going to break the law, so they got to create a new one. Well, that's how they are. Well, the well, I got a solution here. Are you ready? Now they say it's legal to flip off the police officers. <laughs> so don't bring out your gun. Just bring out your finger, bro. <laughs> Just flip them off. Just flip them off. Another law. That's right. A, a police law. officer can't pull you over and arrest you just because you gave him the finger the federal appeals court <laughs> declared on Thursday. So when you get in a, in a huff and a puff, just go bang, bang. That's there insane. you go. But I, I don't think you can make the gun sign with your fingers. I, hey, finger who says? No. Yeah. So you can go bang, bang. And we were talking... Uh, before the show started about that. That's a side. Uh, that's the gang, gangster <laughs> lean. No, is that what that is? No, but there was a, there was a kid, I'm going to say Massachusetts, I can't remember the state, I know it was in the Northeast. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to guess it was probably in the Northeast. Um, <laughs> he he showed his little his little finger gun in class, 6-year-old kid. Uh -huh. We're probably playing cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians or whatever. Right. Gets suspended from school. Uh -huh. That's how little common sense we have left in school, yeah. left in public. That a kid that's six years old that, that was, you know, when we were raised, we played cops and robbers, man. No, that's what, that's what we when did. we made the gun sign in school, we had a rubber band happened. to connect to it. We shoot rubber bands. <laughs> well, maybe. So, you know, put a rubber band on that puck, that bugger, man. Shoot it. All right, let's take a call real quick. We got uh, line one, Mike Garofola. Mike, you're yeah. on the live radio show. That's your that's law abiding citizens up here in New York, that Putnam County place, they're plastering all the concealed weapon people on. So, what happens when one of those people get robbed or they get shot? I I would agree. That's what we were talking about earlier. Is that a lawsuit? Is that a lawsuit waiting to happen or what? I would hope so. I mean, you, if you've got the newspaper, you know, or or other publications trying to uh, post your home address for gun owners, to me, that's telling the criminals where to go hit, you know, or, or where people, not to hit. People that, you're talking about the people that illegally possess weapons that can't get one legally, like you're talking, having a felony or something on your record. Right. So they go break into someone's house. They know they own weapons, and they can steal their guns. Right. Yeah. I would they agree, man. My, they can't stop my German shepherds, though. Well, they, they might if they put a little antifreeze in the right. steak. <laughs> no, no, no. I leave them hungry so that that way they're ready to eat at any time. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, we're, we're not going to talk to Humane Society about you, buddy. We appreciate the call, man. Thanks for listening. I, I think it's humane. We're disposing of garbage. <laughs> That's, hey, I agree. I agree. Thanks, Mike. Take care, buddy. That's your buddy. All right. Uh, line two, we got Brian from Fort Myers. Brian, you're on the Ledge Radio Show. Hey, I, I gotta, I'm got sorry I'm calling back. Cause, uh, you're not sorry. here today. And, uh, I I'm, gotta ask you. I know you gotta so rebut. We no, we you want the people who have concealed weapons uh -huh. to be in the schools to be able to carry their guns, but they can't distinguish between a kid pointing a little finger gun at someone and suspending them. That's true. What's your question? He's trying What's to say. Question? I'm asking you. I mean, you, those are the people that you you don't trust them because they can't distinguish a kid's pointing a, a finger gun at somebody. Well, it's you not. It's not about. No, and act under that stressful. It was on Fox News, and I'm not a big fan of Fox News. You know that. Oh, I know. It was on Fox News. There was an ex Navy SEAL and an ex general that said it's unrealistic to think that someone just because someone went and took a 90 minute concealed weapons class that they're trained enough to be able to act and shoot properly under a stressful yeah. situation. And the chaos like when it breaks Navy, out. The chaos. The Navy SEALs, the sheriffs, they, the SWAT teams, not just a regular road deputy. They're not trained. Those those people are trained for those situations. Hey, Brian. And the Navy SEAL said, it's unrealistic to think that I train for that every day, and I might hit the wrong target. Hey, Brian. To think that someone does none of that training <clears throat> is going to be okay. I, so not just because not just because someone has a concealed weapon. Right. It doesn't give them the right to go wherever they want with their gun and pull it out and shoot somebody because they think they see something bad going on. I, I would agree that there's always the chance for a, a, a mistake, a, a bad situation to happen. But look at the the stories that are almost they're hidden every day, but eventually they get published of the mother at home with her kids who kills the intruder with her gun. She's not a trained I'm, sniper. I'm, and she, I'm you know that that's awesome. But you're talking in an environment that they're familiar with. That's your home. That's not you know a school where you're not familiar with 
you know, I'm saying you, I'm sure you bring your kids into the same school all the time. And you're familiar, but are you familiar with every room and every closet? And no, everything? but I don't. But I don't think that the that the parent that has the gun is going to be doing a right hand search pattern on the school to go eliminate every threat that they can find in there. I think what the what the issue is is if they come up against a guy that has a gun pointed at children, that they can pull their gun out and shoot that guy. That's it. They don't I'm have sure to go sweep the school. Had a gun and did that. I'm sure if someone had a gun and had it concealed and walked into the school, not everybody's being patted down. There's no metal detectors. I'm sure if something like that happened, yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure that they would be like, oh wow, yeah, they, maybe they would be charged with something. But oh, they probably will. But back to one of your points earlier with the the teacher. I, I don't want to even say teachers or maybe administration that can't. Um, rightfully identify with a child that, that points his finger in the shape of a gun at another kid, it's not it's not them that, that have caused this. It's the laws on the books that tell them they have to have a zero-tolerance policy, which takes away common sense. It takes common sense out of the equation. A finger is not a weapon. I agree. Exactly. A pencil exactly. Too is. Depends on who you ask. I agree. <laughs> with a pencil, and I can hurt you more than my finger. I, I would agree. That's right. I saw I, but food. unfortunately, unfortunately, they, they, the schools have zero... It's the interpretation. Look at look how many forms of Christianity there are. That's right. So I can read we're not getting into religion today. You see, no, we're not. Hey, hey look, look, uh, two, two fingers are a analogy. weapon. You just answer three stooges. One little <laughs> and everybody's going to interpret it different. All right. Well, you know, we, we may agree to d- disagree on this particular eye. one, but I think I think our in the end, you know, our goal is the same. It is to keep our children yes. safe, and we just there have to go. we just have to find a way to do that. That's all. But I don't. But I don't think problem. I don't think here's outlawing here's guns is a way to do it. Outlaw plastic guns for the kids. I mean, they can't even carry plastic guns anymore. Up in in Washington D.C. To agree on everything and say, "Hey, we've I agree. got some common ground, and let's come in the middle." You know, maybe you're not going to get everything you want, yeah. but hey, you're going to get something. How about if we do that? Well, well maybe it's up to those, like thanks, you said, those buffoons. Call, thanks for calling in, my friend. Yeah, All thanks, right, buddy. Hey, speaking about DC, that can't agree on everything. Uh-huh. Holy moly! Let's talk about that nice, that well-oiled machine called the GOP that's working <laughs> up there with Boehner. Man, those guys are just fantastic, aren't they? Well, well, well. Here Smitty comes out of left wing. Come on, man. Let's talk about them. The fiscal cliff, we all went over it. You guys held everybody hostage, and then we went over the cliff and crashed, and wow, I'm still here. It's like the Mayan calendar revisited. It's great. Well, so, that's the problem, and that was the whole it, disinformation of the argument, was the whole cliff was a, a creation of Washington to begin with. There was no. There was an artificial date that was set by right. the will of Congress. It could have hey, hey, been wait a moved second here. easily. Be- before we get into fiscal cliff, I know that's where you want to go. Can, can we talk about Al Gore selling selling his paper or oh. I mean I mean his TV channel? Oh, you don't want to talk about the fiscal cliff? I, I do, I do, oh, and, that, and we're going to get into that. Because you guys are screwing it up again that, so bad, you don't want to talk uh-huh. about it. No, we're we're going to get talk into about it. about Boehner getting that major vote for two two votes more, and he got in, he kept his, his speakership. Hey, Harry Reid, Harry Reid's probably barely going to keep his. Boehner okay? can't don't know who to turn to. He's like he's in a he's who an Indian the chief with no. supposed to turn to? He's an Indian chief with no tribe, man. He's yeah. out there. Well, now that's a good point that Ricky makes. Who else were the Republicans going to go to? Are they going to vote for Boehner or are they going to vote for Nancy Pelosi? Exactly. Well, it's your, it's your, it's it's your really side of the trash. You tell us. <laughs> Who would you put in there? Hang on a second. Before we get into that, though. Trey Radel. There you go. I'm with you. I'm with Trey. All right. So Al Gore has sold current TV. Now, there's a couple issues with this. One, he sells it before the tax deadline. Right. Why? For the guy that says we need to pay our, fa- our fair share. He makes sure the deal is done ahead of time so he doesn't have to pay the, the tax increase on it, so he makes as much profit as he can. That's business. Yeah, so Secondly, great, you're about loopholes. business. Those loopholes are Secondly, right you're about business. You're I about am. all the loopholes. I, I'm, I, I am, but I don't say everyone should pay their fair share. I think we already oh, pay it's enough. Okay, it's okay when somebody does it that's on the GOP side, but when they do it and they're on this side, no, it's, it's, about it's, being it's a wrong. Hypocr- it's about being a hypocrite. It's, about, it's a business decision. He made the difference a business between, decision. The difference between the Republicans and the Democrats is the Republicans pay their taxes. The Democrats don't. That's they correct. They find those loopholes. Oh, really? Oh, so, yeah. They oh, find okay. the loopholes like, just, like you just were saying earlier about really? that. Yeah. So that's that. I never knew the Democrats didn't pay taxes. That's amazing. Well, here's here's something on this. The, the second thing, and I, I see, I know we got somebody on hold. Let's let's keep them on it for just a second. So Al Gore sells it, beats the tax deadline, <laughs> so he can make as much profit as he can. Turns down Glenn Beck's company because Glenn Beck's company doesn't meet the standards that he wants to have current TV. Um, molded into or start it, it doesn't fit the mold that that his tv channel uh runs in 
So who does he decide to sell it to? Yeah. Al Jazeera, funded Crazy. by Qatar or Cater or Qatar. It's Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. Okay. They're they are funded by by oil. Okay. It's an oil oil barren country. Now Al Gore is also against fossil fuel. So he just sold his current TV to an oil conglomerate. It's just a business decision. And on top of it, they they are the they promote terrorism in their area. And they, have a and they record, hate America. A Glenn Beck, for women's rights. If Glenn yes. Beck would have given him more money, then he would have bought it. That's as simple as that. He says he didn't He didn't sell it for whatever reason because there wasn't enough money on yeah, the table. No, no, no. He Glenn, said Beck, because, uh, it, Glenn Beck it, offered more money. He said because his philosophies aligned more with Al Jazeera than with Glenn Beck, which yes, is what pretty he, scary. What he, he said was, was vice he says that, that Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera was, was formed with the same philosophy as current TV. So if Al Jazeera promotes terrorism in their area and denigrates women's rights, but yet that's what aligns with Al Gore's current TV's philosophy, we got it. That's a problem. Even the liberals are coming out against that. You saw Jennifer Granholm, who was... She uh, quit. Former, she quit the uh, current TV show. Which is amazing. It is. So, you know, that's that was one... And, and all, of course, everybody's jumping on this. I mean, everybody on the right is jumping on it. I don't, I don't know if the liberal... Uh, networks are even mentioning it because it doesn't sound good when you sell your TV channel. And what about shipping jobs overseas? Now you just sold it to a frickin' to a, a company out of out of Qatar, you know, in the Middle East. Um, but yet you're all for keeping Americans employed. That's everything we create American Al Gore. jobs. Absolutely, the Democrat Party. Hypocrisy of Al Gore. As much, yeah, his hypocrisy knows no bounds. So let's all right. um, all right, let's go to break. When we get back, um, we'll definitely get into fiscal cliff. And that'll be the topic that'll take us through the end of the show. 277-9600-775-9600. Flashback. Flashback. With Matt Pinfield. Sunday night, 8 to midnight. Flashback in time with the Who. Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, and more. We live the greatest moments in pop culture. From movies. I'll be back. TV. Nothing for you. Newscasts and sport clips. Hey, you believe in miracles? Yes! Flashback. Flashback. Ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Matt Pinfield, and welcome to Flashback. Flashback. Sunday night, 8 to midnight. On 96 K-Rock. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Offers with approved credit, $23.99 due at signing, plus tax tag title. Sonata includes $500 loyalty, $500 military. $1,500 holiday bonus cash, twenty four ninety five dollars dealer, no security deposit required. The new year is here. It's time to lose weight, get in shape, get out of debt, hold everything. You can do all three at O'Brien Hyundai of Fort Myers. Lose the weight of a high car payment with 2013 Sonata lease payments as low as $169 a month. Get your bank account in shape with no down payments. And O'Brien Hyundai will help you get out of debt with 0% financing and up to five grand in savings. It's O'Brien Hyundai's resolution solution. Choose from over 300 vehicles on the lot. And you always get America's best warranty, 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, and Hyundai Assurance. Don't wait another minute. Come get your resolution solution now. Get to O'Brien Hyundai of Fort Myers, just two miles west off I-75 on Colonial Boulevard. Or click O'BrienTeamHyundai.com. You should be buying from O'Brien. You should be buying. I'm going to tell you some things I don't think the insurance industry is going to like. As lawyers at trial, there are things we can't say, and I don't think it's fair. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. We meet with people every day who suffer terrible injuries on and off the job. We meet families who've lost loved ones suddenly without warning. At trial, we're not allowed to say to juries, what if it was you? What if your mother 
father, son, or daughter lost their life as a result of this conduct? What if your child suffered this way? What if your friend or coworker was treated so horribly? And guess what else? You, the juror, are not allowed to know if the wrongdoer had insurance. That's not right either. The next time you serve as a juror, ask yourself one final question before rendering justice. What if it was you? What if it was your child, your husband, your wife? Morgan & Morgan, for the people.com. Offices, Fort Myers and Naples. It's that time of year again when Total Nutrition wants to help you reach your goal this new year. And they're doing it with their annual buy one, get one 50% off, or buy two, get one free sale. Stop into any one of their six convenient locations and let one of their certified sports nutritionists customize a plan for you. In Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Naples, and Fort Charlotte. Total Nutrition's annual buy one, get one 50% off, or buy two, get one free sale. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. Julian, technician with Safe Flight Auto Glass. What makes Safe Flight different? Well, with Safe Flight, you get the reliability of America's largest auto glass company. Every windshield we replace is backed by the only national lifetime guarantee, keeping you covered coast to coast. Plus, a new windshield is the perfect time to get new windshield wipers. Safe Flight can do that too. Just call 800 800 2727 or go to safelight.com or ask your insurance company for Safe Flight. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. Welcome back to 392-777-9600 or 775-9600. You can email us at J.D. or Smitty at theledgeradioshow.com. Check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. Uh, Smitty. You've heard about Joe, the Jump on Express in Naples. I've heard it. I heard it's, it's the it's the newest thing down there yep. for the people that are in the know. Yep. It, this weekend is the 17th annual Downtown Naples New Year's Art Fair. It's being held today and tomorrow, the fifth and sixth. You can visit all your favorite shops on Fifth Avenue yep. while strolling through the uh, the works of about 230 professional artists. Sweet. Uh, the Bluegrass Parlor Band will be playing Saturday the, on the fifth. fifth. That's today, hmm. tonight at 7:30. Uh, until 10. Wow. For a full schedule of the events on 5th, visit uh, fifthavenuesouth.com. But while you're down there... Yep, you can get around. You can get around with the Jump On Express. Um, the acronym is Joe, and they'll take you... The, the, it runs between Mercado, 5th Avenue, 3rd. So if you want to park your car... It's kind of like a trolley party bus type it, it, of... Dude, it's not... Yeah, it, I wouldn't even use trolley, man. This yeah. thing is, is high tech. This it is, is This is. is just all out... Beautiful limo bus. That's right. It, um, it, run, it runs all the time, so you can drop you know drop your car at uh, Mercado, jump on the bus, head downtown, have a few drinks, um, you know, meet they, meet some folks. Yeah, meet yeah. some people. They'll bring you right back. So check it out. No cost for the bus, right? Um, you know, I actually don't think there is a cost. It's That's a crazy, deal. huh? Great deal. If there is a cost, then uh, Chris Berardi, he'll, he'll pick up the tab. That's right. Send, <laughs> send your complaints, Chris Berardi. <laughs> send it to the Congress. Yeah. Right. So let's um, uh, right before we get into the uh, fiscal cliff, I want to. Play a quick montage. I'm sure. I think it's uh, is it cut two, sick, Rick? Let's get this. is This is Obama at his best, um, telling you one thing, and then showing you something else. So cut two, sick, Rick, please. If I could have gotten fifty, no, that's not it. That's a cut one. <laughs> sick, Rick. Well, he sound like he's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what's going on. There we go. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. He was right about that. The way to make government accountable is make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. Speak on it, brother man. Let Speak on it. say it as simply as yeah, I can. Yeah, listen. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. In fact, man. since taking office, this has been the administration that's prosecuted more whistleblowers in two years than in the preceding 40 years. It meets with lobbyists across the street from the White House so they don't have to disclose their meeting with lobbyists. And, this is true, censored nearly 200 pages of internal emails about their efforts to make government more transparent. <laughs> How weird has this administration's record on transparency gotten? 
President Obama received an award for transparency Monday. That meeting was completely closed to members of the media. <laughs> they not only closed the meeting to the media, they didn't even put it in the president's public schedule. I believe that every single American has the right to affordable, accessible health care. But these negotiations will be on C-SPAN. <laughs> It'll be televised on C-SPAN. It's on C-SPAN. I think I missed on that. On C-SPAN. Yeah. On C-SPAN. <laughs> C-SPAN founder and CEO Brian Lamb tells the Daily Caller that C-SPAN's cameras need more access in Congress. Would you have liked to see C-SPAN in the negotiations to see what was going on behind closed doors? The president said that we're all going to be on C-SPAN. He never asked us. This prompted C-SPAN to send a formal letter to Congress today. They are requesting, once again, full camera access to all of the relevant negotiations to how our health care system will be changed in this country. Brian Lamb, the founder of C-SPAN, is urging Senate Leader Harry Reid and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, along with the President, to allow the public full access. Well, just lastly, why can't you answer the C-SPAN question? I did. Well, you didn't because you, uh, said, you I said, said I hadn't seen the letter, which well, I have. Why do you need to see a letter? I mean, this is something the well, president said during the, the campaign, and yeah, you talked about he wants everything open on C-SPAN. Dan asked me about the letter, and I, I haven't read the letter, so well, I I'll wanted just to ask you about no, being, I, having it on C-SPAN. I, I, I answered Dan's question, and I answered this. Uh, uh, a lot of reasons not to do it on C-SPAN. I love that guy. I miss him. Do you regret making that statement during the campaign? No. If you have insurance that you like, then you will be able to keep that insurance. If you've got a doctor that you like, you will be able to keep your doctor. Oh, well, great. Nobody is trying to change what works. Sounds like a good, good deal. Uh, but I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate employer coverage immediately. There's going to be <laughs> potentially some transition process. I can envision a decade out or 15 years out or 20 years. If you're one of the more than 250 million Americans who already have health insurance, you will keep your health insurance. This law will only make it more secure and more affordable. If you repeat it enough to I'm sure that a lot of employers again, are going to drill well, their health insurance coverage to dump people on the government run exchanges. One of the concerns about health care and how you pay for it, one third of the funding comes from cuts right. uh, to Medicare. Right. It is important for us to make sure this thing is deficit neutral without tricks. <laughs> I said I wouldn't wow. sign a bill that didn't meet that criteria. They used 10 years of revenues uh, in seven years of spending and said, see, look, over 10 years this pays for itself. Cutting Medicare by $500 billion. He cut seniors' home health care by 11%. It's a plan that asks everyone to take responsibility for meeting this challenge. Everybody. Exempting some from complying with the new health care law. They've been granted a special waiver from key provisions of the new law. All this coming out in just the first two years. This plan will reduce the cost of health care for millions. Instead, they've gone up by 2,200. Premiums, I think, have gone up 9%. Still leaves 23 million people uninsured. Let, let me also uh, address an illegitimate concern that's being put forward by those who are claiming that a public option is somehow a Trojan horse for a single-payer system. A single-payer Healthcare plan, universal healthcare plan. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, I think <laughs> if we get a good public option, it could lead to single payer, and that's the best way to reach single payer. Nobody is Barney talking Barney. about some Senator government Frank? takeover of healthcare. Mm -hmm. I happen to be a proponent of a single payer universal healthcare plan, <laughs> <laughs> and that should never be purchased. That's enough. So with tax increase. But yeah, you we, get the point, man. We left out. They got to update it. You now. know, it sounds like it sounds like a bunch of sour grapes, man. You guys are just still pissing in the wind, mad because you didn't win, and you're just going to. By anything that he could say that he said in the past, you're going to drag out and drag out. I suggest you I concentrate. Know. I suggest, let me give you some advice. I suggest you concentrate on your own party. That's where your problem is. It ain't with him. You guys can't even manage your own party. Well, when my taxes yeah. go up, I'm Bainer a will prove concerned. that time and time and time again. Speaking of taxes going yeah. up. We've got to update that clip to include no taxes will go up on anyone except the uh, yeah. rich. I wish you would have said, right? said, read my lips. Yeah. Yeah. Great. He said because the middle class will never will the taxes will never go up on the middle class. Well, my check this this week, my paycheck is lower than it was the week before because the, of the two percent um, that was reintroduced. The payroll the tax, payroll tax yeah. um, that that exp it was allowed to expire during the fiscal cliff. Um, so that alone raises ta raise, raises taxes on every working American, 
And obviously, the low income earners, the middle Somebody income earners. Somebody has to pay for that war that we got in. Oh. Somebody's got to pay for that war. Here we go. It's war. always the war. The war and the deficit that we got is because of Bush. You know, Somebody's got to pay for it. You know, Smitty, I'm glad you, you know? bring that up because I was I was ready for the war statement knowing oh, no. that you well, talk about that you know, often. Bring it on. It's but the truth. In eight years of Iraq war, Iraq war spending, the cost was $709 billion. That's from 03 to 010, or to 10. The cost of stimulus was eight hundred and fourteen billion by mm -hmm. Obama, and that's according to CBO. So it's not some numbers we just made up uh, and threw out there. So the wars cost far less than Obama's stimulus, which did zero for our economy. You mean that stimulus package didn't help us? I, I, don't I thought know. It, I didn't feel helped. I thought what it did is it helped him get reelected. That but how it. many trillions are we spending each year? One, two, three? Who four, knows? Four, three, like, three and a half, three point seven. Yeah. I mean, that's when you only take in 1.6 and you spend 3.7 or whatever it is, 2.7. Um, obviously, the problem is you just need more money to spend. Right. That's it. It's that not. It's not. Our, our, it's not cut any spending. It's, issues. it's yes. let's tax the American citizens more, tax the wealthy more, so we can spend more. Right. That'll help. Right. Only, right. Only it, says, it says last year's federal budget deficit was 12 percent lower than in 2009, according to the Office of Management and Budget. The deficit is projected to shrink even more over the next several years. Okay. Where so did years, you get that from? Because years, the, this new, that's not current. Because the new fiscal cliff deal just raised. We just got a. It's a four trillion dollar price tag over the next decade. So or I'm, two decades. Yeah, over the next decade, just four trillion in, in ten years. Our you know what I hate though? I hate it when they give you a ten year span. Yeah. Tell me right. how much it's going to cost this year and oh, next year. Oh no, it's going to be our grandkids and our great grandkids, right? I mean, we're talking seventeen trillion dollars. How are they going to pay that down? Well, this is we just added four trillion to the deficit. Yeah. Okay. In with this deal. Yeah. They said oh, that. Okay. They said that if we wouldn't have come up with a deal, we would have actually saved money it, it, by not coming up with this depth with this new deal over the next couple of years. We'd actually start reducing the deficit just because of the spending cuts that were going to going to go into effect right away. But even this deal, I think, only uh, prolongs those spending cuts. But two months. Two months. So it's it's yeah, a it two sounds month. like a bunch of unicorns and rainbows there. I mean, this is all fantasy. It's not going to work. Yeah, let's um let's take a call real quick. It looks like uh, Sick Rick line one. We got uh, James from North Fort Myers. James, you're on the Ledge Radio Show. Hey guys, morning. Hey morning. Morning. Good, morning. Good thanks. Good. What do you think about the GOP? Smitty, you hit it on the head. Oh, here we go. I've got a son who is way up in Wells Fargo in Manhattan. Right. And one of our best comedy shows was George Bush. Okay. Oh, well, here we go. George Bush Blamer again. There we go. And Boehner uh -huh. is right there. Right. He can't even get his own party together to make and a decision. No, Obama can. That's, that's all I'm saying. So I won the election. That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. they, they need to work on that before they start. That's right. You know, banging the Democrats. That's right. For trying to do something. Well, trying doing something do wrong something. isn't any good. Doing wrong, when you do something wrong, you got to no, spend more time to do it to correct it. Well, then they all need to get together and work together. It's a great plan. Right. I, I would agree. It's a great yeah. theory. Unfortunately, they don't. They, uh, they don't get together. Get together. Now, unfortunately, right. we've lost our way in Washington. It's it, it, we're no longer the party of lower taxes and less spending. We're the party that gives in to Obama, and we yeah. have to we have well, to stand up for this, the principles. This, this of our division, party. as we talked about at break, I said everybody thanks, should James. just thanks, thanks for thanks, calling. Thanks, I think right. I, I think it's best that everybody just goes in as an independent and stop saying I'm a, I'm a I'm a Republican, I'm a GOP, I'm a Democrat, I'm this, I'm that. I know, but that's it, fairy tale land. It's not well, going to happen. But, but that's that's the way it's only going to come together. Because as long as you have division, you're going to have two sides just saying, "Lay, we go this way." This side says, "We go this way." Well, if everybody, we, that used to work, have, we used to have uh, compromise. We used to actually work together back yes. in the 90s. Do yes. you remember that? Yeah, I remember when, uh, when we used to work together. We had Gingrich as speaker, and we yeah. had Clinton as the president, and they actually would actually work out an issue. They actually months. talked. They talked, yeah. In, in open meetings. Obama just don't exactly. talk. In open meetings, yes. I mean, the only time Obama and Boehner talk appears to be on the golf course. Speak, speak, yeah. Speaking, yeah. About, speaking about Gingrich, um, the former House speaker, he said he warned House Republicans not to hold the debt ceiling for the political leverage coming up, and, and con con contradicting Republicans who have strongly hinted that their plans are to do just that. He says they've got to find in the House a totally new strategy. He said everybody is talking about, oh, here comes the ceiling debt. I think, frankly, it's a dead loser because at the end, you know it's going to happen. The whole national financial system is going to come into Washington and on television and say, oh, my God, this will be a, gig a gigantic heart attack. The entire economy of the world will collapse. You guys will be held responsible, and, th and they'll cave. Well, they so, did. They do cave. They said, cave every said, time. You can't keep thinking of the way things are thought of in the last few months without having disaster on your hands. 
So he's right. Yeah, you Newt's can, right. He, exactly. He's right. And and if you, as long as you cave. And, and Newt had some excellent points about the cliff, too. He said, you know, it should have been broken up into a series of smaller individual bills that were voted on in regular order in, in Congress and not held behind closed doors. Same argument. Uh, so that the people would have seen what everyone was voting you know, for and against. And speaking of that, another area, where, another uh, item that you can look at that, that would have been a, a perfect scenario for that, and I think the Republicans just did it, the Sandy Aid Package Bill. Not to get off yeah. the fiscal cliff, but because of the pork that was in that bill, $61 billion bill, it, it had stuff saving the Ru- whales in the Ruby- California. Ruby- Rubio didn't sign it. But Paul Paul Ryan did sign it. Yeah, I I, I really. Not, also, we're not talking, about, we're not talking about the eight. That that okay. was the fiscal cliff deal. I'm still talking about the Sandy Aid package. So what the Republicans did is they stripped all of the pork out of it. They approved a nine point seven billion dollar Sandy Aid package bill, which I don't know if that's enough money um, to you know do everything that needs to be done uh, for the Sandy victims. Um, but it took all the pork out of it. Now, I don't know if that still has to go to the Senate to get approved, then yeah, go to the president. Yeah. I'm sure it and, does. And they're coming back on the 15th to vote on the rest of that package. They just broke it into right. two parts. But, but why? What, what, what I'm concerned about, too, at the same time, is that they use these <laughs> issues and these uh, these situations, and they, they uh, take advantage of the situation. Did you like, when I'm talking about the physical cliff, and then uh, all of a sudden fiscal cliff, and all of a sudden they pass, um, Obama does an executive order and gives increases. Uh, uh, pay, pay raises. Pay raises. Pay raises. In, in, the middle, federal workers. in the middle of this, and Obama gives an example. Ex- in the middle of this Obama gives an executive order to, to give a pay raise to the, everybody from the vice president down. Luckily, even some Democrats jumped on and and rallied around getting rid of that provision. So they, I guess, they overturned it, um, well, they did. got it I rejected. Well, so now Congress does not get the and, and I guess to say pay raise. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if that's the correct terminology because basically what it did is it unfroze the pay increase freeze that was put into place a few years ago. But why, amidst all of what's going on? Arbitrarily, why would Obama just say, "Hey, we're going to go ahead and give raises"? Because it's again. under the radar. It doesn't Nobody make any pays sense. To it. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't help Take anything. Did it right while uh, negotiations with the cliff were going on. That's a small pebble in the road. No, but it's every day there's a small pebble in the sky. Did you just? It's a you, you, okay, it's a principle. Wait, you're wait, talking about you Washington D.C. Well, you're talking about principles. <laughs> <laughs> that's an oxymoron. Are you, are you, are you saying that you don't have well, a problem? We need to send the right people up there. Are you saying you don't have a problem with Congress getting a raise? I'm saying on the large scale of things that that's just the one little dot on the page. That should be the straw that breaks the camel's back. That ain't gonna be no straw. Traction more than let's, else. let's go it to break. How many when we get back, more on the fiscal cliff. Two three nine two seven seven ninety six hundred seven seven five ninety six hundred. Zito and Garrett. Cheech and Chong, our guests right here on Zito and Garrett. Hey, when you guys were making all those movies in the 70s and 80s, uh, there was a lot of smoking going on. I'm curious to find out how much of it was real pot. Were you guys smoking real pot on film? Are you kidding me? You're asking uh, Cheech and Chong if they were faking it. Are you kidding me? Actors? Are you accusing us of being actors? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? Zito and Garrett Middays, 10 to 2 p.m. after Bubba on 96 K Rock. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services leave Charlotte and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Duncan's Diamonds, the largest diamond and jewelry superstores, is having a diamond sale with savings of up to 75%. Find great prices on certified diamonds. Make Mr. Duncan an offer. Duncan's Diamond Extravaganza, Fort Myers, US 41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center. C-O-O-M-T-A-N. I was tan last summer, now I'm pale again I need a little bit of help to be ready for the beach Zoom tan puts a sum within my reach Brown as a biscuit for $9.99 ZoomTan.com for a limited time ZoomTan.com Zoom 
ZoomTan has 25 locations throughout Florida. Go to ZoomTan.com for a location near you and for a free spray tan coupon. That's ZoomTan.com. Why be pale and pasty when you can be tan and tasty? You know, Caroline? What? Mr. and Mrs. Johnson were in here the other day yep. in Bradenton. Mm-hmm. You know what they were so impressed with, which is, you know, one of the little things we do here. Folks, when you come to oh, Billy and Caroline, by the way, over here at Facilo Kia, Cape Coral, Florida, they're in Ujitan 2013. But you know what they were really impressed with, Caroline? They liked our, the row of test drive cars we have. You know, they went to two other dealerships, and then the salesman had to stumble, bumble, go out to the lot with a tag, throw it on, plastic on the seats, a bad, da 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 ding dong But they come here. We have them all lined up, all gassed up, right? The, the, and the plates are already on them, and they can take them out and test drive them and see if they like them, and then pick out the color and equipment they want. Right. I mean, we know that you want to drive the car before you commit to buying it, so why not just have them available and ready to go when you get there? Let me tell you something. That's number one. And the second thing they like was I got involved with the banks. Oh, boy. You know, most of these dealers are out playing golf, folks. Not me. I'm a, I'm with you, baby. We're getting, we're grinding. For better or for worse. You know, Caroline, <laughs> it's all same. about being huge, Caroline. At Advance Auto Parts, we don't do anything just part way. We go full throttle. We don't just sell batteries. Oh, no. We install them fast and free with purchase on most vehicles. And we mean fast. If strapping on an experimental jetpack would help us install your battery any faster, we'd do it. Unfortunately, jetpacks can be squirrely. Too bad, because we really wanted those things. Fast, free battery installation at Advance. Service is our best part. Advance Auto Parts. Lawyers in Florida are regulated by the Florida Bar. They make the rules we must follow. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan, and I want to tell you about a rule that I strongly disagree with. As lawyers, we're not allowed to tell you, the consumer, about our verdicts at trial or about results we've achieved for our clients before trial. I believe that not only is this a violation of our First Amendment rights, but I believe that you, the consumer, may suffer as a result. Look, all lawyers and law firms are not the same. How do you know if the firm you hired or are about to hire is any good or not? There are lawyers out there who may never have been to trial for an injury case, and if so, not many times. The lawyer you hire can have a direct result on your final outcome. Visit ForThePeople.com to learn about us, our results, and our verdicts. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. Offices for Myers and Naples. Unfiltered, unbridled opinions and giving Southwest Florida a voice. Voice, voice. It's the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty on 96K Rock. Talk that rocks. Talk that rocks. Welcome back. 239 277 or 775 Email us at JD or Smitty at theledgeradioshow.com. Check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. Before we get back in the fiscal cliff, we've got uh, four more tickets to the Everblaze game on the 9th. That's this coming Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Four tickets, Everblades versus the Toledo Walleye. Your uh, catchphrase when you call in, I want, I the, want, the, I walleye. want the walleye. I want the walleye. So call in to Tripod Billy 277-9600. We're taking the fifth caller. Fifth caller. You know Tripod's not going to remember what number. He just saw me hold my hands. <laughs> okay. Fifth caller. Or 775-9600 for free tickets. Call in right now. All right, guys, uh, back to the uh, fiscal cliff. All right, so while we were on break, we were also we were talking about some of the pork that's in these uh, in the deal that was approved. Now this this bill that got approved was done last minute at the you know stroke of midnight, three a.m. I don't know, it was, it was overnight. You know, Joe Biden. That's because had, you guys can't agree to anything. Joe you, Biden had, had, had to, to step in with Mitch McConnell because, to get it done because the because GOP Boehner and, and Reid wouldn't because, even talk because the GOP can't get their act together. And it's not the, that has let, me, let, me, let me just let me tell you something. The Tea Partiers have caused more havoc oh, over there. Here, and so, thank God they're gone, and you only got trickled down. That's a dying breed. No, we're still here. Yeah, you're there. You're still there. You're there. Still <laughs> here, like man. a vine. I'm still here. Here's the here's the problem. Okay, the House passes bills all the time. They pass them. They send them to the Senate. Harry Reid doesn't do anything with it. He doesn't, even, Senate to he doesn't even bring them to the floor to vote no on them, to show the American people they don't want it. You mean he Harry, just, Harry the same guy that hasn't brought a budget to the you mean, floor? You mean, yeah. you, you mean like Boehner didn't want to bring up the, the Sandy package either? He let that blow up, and Christie had to call That's him out incorrect. on, on, on saying, Incorrect. Yes, yeah, of course. The reason incorrect. why Boehner didn't want to sign the, the reason why Boehner didn't sign or bring that bill to the vote, it had $61 billion in it. 
half, more than half of it was pork. pork. Was stuff for saving the whales in California and not seals in Alaska. There are some pork in it though, and I got them right here. Some? No, that's not San Diego. That's, no, that's the pork in the fiscal cliff. cliff. This is a good uh, again. Cliff. Smith, he's got two different Wrong issues. Producer. going. everything that passes has pork in it. Yeah, well, that, you know, that's true. That's true. And, and and that I has like to, that has to stop. You know mm. what I mean. It, the, the rum, I'm, the rum producer. This is the fiscal cliff. The rum producer's got a, got a little bump in in the money there. Um, how much? You know, you have it over 480 there. Four hundred eighty million in aid for rum production. Um, electric scooter scooters got up to twenty five hundred dollar tax credit for them. Seventy million for NASCAR. Yeah, seventy million. For so NASCAR. NASCAR got a seventy million yeah, dollar tax break, NASCAR. which is really surprising for me because I'm a NASCAR fan. Used to be 40, now. Um, I will no longer be a NASCAR fan. Thank you very much. Forty billion for for NASCAR. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go uh, drink some rum and watch the Daytona 500. Con- Congress r- wrote it to extend $59 million to tax credits to algae growers who are trying to find a way to produce biofuel for plants. And, and asparagus producers who got an extension of their market loss assistance pr- um, payment, which compensates farmers for their loss of revenues. Well, let's now, get to the biggest one. Though. Yes. The, the biggest one, the payback, the Obama payback, uh, the $430 million for Hollywood. Hollywood. Hold yeah, on. and that's what it was. I'll tell you what so, it was. so Hollywood that raised some of the biggest money. Making movies in America is big money, and Congress is doing its best to ensure hey, the movie industry read. doesn't pack up the leave. Because I know these numbers you throw out right are wrong. Right off, right off, right off of Wikipedia. <laughs> Television and movie Wikipedia? makers can continue to gross $15 million in breaks for filming in U.S., $20 million for filming in low-income areas, and estimated in the Center for the Cost of History. Because I really feel sorry billion for the Hollywood to maintain. There you go. How much? 430 four, four, what? Only $430 billion. Billion That's or million? million? Billion. Billion. It says billion. Is right? that over a 10-year period or one year? Know. It probably is over a 10-year period. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, But there's usually right. There's pork in everything. And I don't know. What, the, what is the deal with that? Why can't they just take that it's out? Both and, sides. Right. You know, it's right. Not just the Democrats, but it's the it's Republicans. It's a bait and switch. It's a sneaky this. way. Uh, yeah. Let's get to our uh, let's get to our winner on line three. Absolutely. All right, uh, Gary, you are the winner of the Everblaze tickets, man. Thanks for calling in. Fantastic. Yeah, fa- you you sound you sound fantastic. Well, listen, <laughs> you know what's nice about it? I mean, these tickets are probably about twenty bucks a piece. You got a pack of four of them for you and the family or your buddies or whatever uh, for this Wednesday night at the Everblades. It's a, it'll be a great game. Uh, we appreciate listening. Thanks for winning. Uh, stay on hold. Tripod will get your information, buddy. Thank you. I think they have some rum <laughs> discounts there, too. <laughs> I don't think so. It's about six bucks a beer. <laughs> Just take a caller on one. <laughs> I don't have any callers on line one. I don't, I don't know what you're doing over there. You know, I, I'm, in charge of the, I'm in charge of the phone over here. You see this? You see my computer with the phone over here? I got that under control. All right. All right. Back to the fiscal cliff. So we know we got loads of pork in there. Now, Chris, in your estimation, then, Hollywood gave millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars to Obama. Payback. So at the why? Why? When we're trying to come up with a, a, a supposedly a deal to stop us from going over the cliff, this this supposed cliff that's going to destroy our, our country, why would anyone throw in their uh, tax incentives for Hollywood, Hollywood that, movies and stars? Why I, is that I, important? I think it's, it's not important, but I think it's simple that they, they knew they could get it passed. Just because, because they could. because if because if someone voted no on it, it makes them look like they don't they don't want to help America. And they're against the uh, stopping of the fiscal cliff. You know? Right. All right. Let's um let's take a call real quick. Line two. I got uh, Bruce from LaBelle on the Les Radio Show. Bruce, what's up, buddy? Uh, I just have an opinion about what y'all are talking about. Yes, sir. And that is that it's all what's in it for me. Yeah. It, yep. It's exactly these guys that are in there for thirty or forty years. Nobody goes up there. Uh, it's an average person that doesn't come out a millionaire, and all the pork and all the other garbage is all what's in it for me. What can I get out of this? The hell with everybody else. I would agree, man. That's yep, uh, agree. and, and it, that's something that Smitty and I also agree on. And you know, I think you've got uh, term limits that, you know, in play there. You've got people that, if you look at the, you know, where the largest percentage per capita of millionaires are, look at Congress, look yeah. at the yeah, Senate, exactly. You know, I'd agree, man. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for the call, buddy. You know, Thanks they, for they get health care for life. They get pension for life. Yeah, health care and pension for life. for life. But not Obamacare. They have exempted themselves no, from that. They exempted themselves. Well, they have you to know, complete I, one for uh, one term first, and then they get that whole package. Oh, what, what, a, a, really, what a tough there's, one. And the, the, the unfortunate the thing is that we have found, as Republicans and Democrats, one area where we can find compromise, and it's pork. And it's, mm. it's yeah, it's they all want it. We shouldn't. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm, I've got something I'm going to bring up with our next caller. we got got uh, uh, line one. Chris from Charlotte. Chris helped fill in, uh, fill in last week when I was out at the Redneck Yacht Club. Yes, he did. Chris, you're on the Ledge Radio Show, buddy. Welcome back. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. Uh, 
just want to comment on a couple of things. Um, you know, first you have the young Republicans in there, you know, looking for support to get some Republicans into the party and, and support a lot of their, uh, their ideas. Um, you know, I was a Republican that left the party in 2002. I rejoined briefly in both 2008 and 2012 only to uh, vote in the primary for sure. Ron Paul. Um, I agree with Smitty on this. I mean, Republicans definitely have an identity crisis here. Uh, they don't seem to know what they stand for. That is true. Uh, this past right. election season was the yeah. perfect example where they basically alienated the entire libertarian wing of the party. Exactly. You know? They did. And so, you know, I mean, how, how can you drum up support for your party when... You know, you're alienating a good portion of the base. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I mean, I, and I agree with you. Let, let me ask you a question because uh, I know you're a Ron Paul supporter, and and I, I liked a lot of things that Ron Paul stood for, and I, and I wasn't even via, I was not even vehemently opposed to his um, to his form, foreign policy. It's something we hadn't tried before. Um, maybe it would have worked. I don't know. But um, one of the things that that turned me off to Ron Paul, you know, I thought Ron Paul, you know, when you look at it, when you look at the guy and you listen to him that he's the most honest guy that you could ever find running for office. Well, mm -hmm. one thing I heard, and maybe you know more about this because you, you've followed him for a lot longer than I have. I heard yeah. that Ron Paul, um, while he was, you know, while he, while he was uh, uh, in office, would, he would always vote no for most things. He voted no for a lot of the bills, which is, which is a good idea. Most of it we don't need. We don't need ex you know, more laws in the books. But in sure. voting no, he would put pork into the bill for his state, Vote no, knowing it would be approved. So then he could he could show his constituents that hey, I I vote no. I, I know we don't need these more laws, but at the same time, well, coming in the back door is the pork on the bills he knows is going to get approved. That to me is the, not that is not good business. No, well the thing is, is the money it, it doesn't increase the spending. What he's saying is the money is already going to be spent because it's already going to be spent, and you know not anything more than than what's already being approved is is being spent is that if it's going to be spent, he has an obligation to bring his, uh, his district portion of that back to them. So, so you're so saying... It's going to go somewhere. So you're saying so it, it's not like he, if, if there was, if there was a, hundred, a billion dollar bill, let's say, I mean, and I don't know, I, I, don't, I didn't realize, and I still I don't think that I'm, I would agree on this, but I, I don't see Congress bringing a bill that, that they've already marked as a cap of a hundred billion dollars and they say, all right, everybody, all you, all you senators, all you, or all you congressmen, um, here we got a hundred billion dollars. We're going to put forward. Uh, take your portion as you wish, and that'll be the port for your state. When you see these bills, like the stimulus bill, the eight hundred something billion dollar bill, it was eight hundred something billion dollars because so many different people had their hands in the pie, and each one of them would have a forty billion dollar incentive for this, you know, this group or this. Um, Lack, this state. Lack of ethics, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and so... No, no, but, but it's not because he's voting no. He doesn't want the money being spent. He would vote no for the spending bill. Ron it would Paul's, only be uh, once the bill, you know, once his, his vote lost and more people voted for the spending than against it, it's like, okay, now they, they've voted to spend $100 billion or wh whatever it may be. You know, I have an obligation to the voters in my district to get our portion to... You know, keep in mind his voters are paying their taxes into that bill. That's true. So he's got a he's got a responsibility to bring their portion back to them, so that they're not getting, you know, they're not paying into something they're getting nothing back for. Well, I mean, I, I see, so that, I see, I see the theory behind it, and I, I understand where you're coming from. It just seems to me like it's not a an above board ethical. It's not doesn't seem to be 100 percent ethical. It seems to be kind of a backroom deal. To spend. I mean, they're going to spend whatever they're going to spend. It doesn't change it. It doesn't add to the spending. Well, that's all that, he's but, basically doing is saying, you know, rather than all the money go to Pennsylvania, right? You know, I got to take some of that well, back to Texas with me. And, well, let me and, let me know, give you their money back. Let me give you an analogy on that. Let's say that your neighbor is a, is a thief, and they're going to go to Walmart and they're going to steal ten TVs. Well, you you don't like theft, but they're already going to steal it. So, so, so you get your so, AK and shoot. No, 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 <laughs> no. So so I say so I say. Can you can you go ahead and just allocate one of those TVs for me? You're already going to steal but it. The people, the, but the people in his district, it's, it's not necessarily stolen because the people in his district have paid their taxes into that bill. they got to get something back for it if it's going to be spent. I suppose. You know, otherwise, somebody else is just going to get their money. I suppose. Um, you know, and another point I wanted to make on, on the whole, you know, the Republican thing, on, on one end, you know, they're, they're screaming about their Second Amendment rights, which I agree with. I mean, you know, I, the government shall not infringe. I mean, it's clearly written into the Constitution. Yep. But it's also the same party that passed the Patriot Act back in 2002 or 2003. Very true. That took away a lot of our constitutional rights. So, 
you know, there's so much hypocrisy there. I mean, how can you draw up support for a party that, that's not playing on the level? Well, and, and uh, some, just, something just, that Smitty and I... Just a real note, Obama's probably upheld more of that Patriot Act stuff in the past. Everybody thought he was anti, but he's actually upheld all those Bush... Well, that's because oh, he, that's that's because he likes control. Right. Can I mention, can I mention right. It makes what sense. It just makes the sense. conversation of ending the, the Fed and ending the EPA and all of these... You know, still have a Kennedy when he tried to end the Fed, didn't Well, you? remember, none of, all, of the, all of the Republicans that were running during the primary for the presidency that, that ran on that platform, mm -hmm. they were all ousted. I mean, look at Ron, Ron Paul. Um, Herman Cain, not even Herman Cain, but you know there was there was There's Michelle only Bachman. Ron Paul. He's the no, only there, well, there were a few that were that, that jumped on the Ron Paul bandwagon because they saw right. the support he was getting behind it. And I think Chris would agree with that. That there were, Absolutely. yeah, that, when they, when they saw that the American we people were behind him for that. Reserve, nobody, nobody exactly, and people are yeah. just getting fed up, and they want honest politicians. And I mean, it's just not existing it's anymore. Very, very the only difficult. one hard to find it was Ron Paul, Rand Paul, maybe, maybe Rand Paul. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. some good people out there. It's just that we don't hear enough from them. Hey, Chris, thanks for the call, man. We're coming up on the end of the All show. Right. We appreciate it, buddy. Take Absolutely. care of there. Thank you, my friend. Have a good one, no, guys. He makes a good point. You know, I mean, there's that, – that is what people want. People want honest, honest politicians, but I think – And there's such thing. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, an, it's an oxymoron. They're there. They just get drowned out. They go up there. They get sucked up by the system. Politicians. Politicians. Yeah. The system sucks yeah. them in. Exactly. They go in with this ideology. It's going to be – I'm going to change the world like right. trade. With, yeah. oh, we're going to do – he gets up there, and next thing you know, you're muck. They you can't play dirty. Play you got to play dirty. They never, they never you have to play the game. Right. Yeah. All they want to be is famous. Though. They want to be. It's like going into a fight. Want... You think it's going to be yeah. a boxing match. Oh, hey, listen, before MMA. we go, Young Republican <laughs> meeting, January eighth. Oh, uh, this Tuesday. Yeah, this Tuesday at Daruma at six thirty. At six thirty. Right. And check out our Facebook page if you get a chance. We'll be back next week, guys. Thanks a lot.